All right, what's good, what's good, what's good, what's happening, everybody? What's good, what's good, what's good? We got Yoshi first, Jefferson second, Rich third, Captain fourth. Man, that Bulldogs game, I'm still, I I still don't believe that actually happened. All right, we, we should not have won that. I mean, we were playing like the worst. I still feel like Georgia, if we were to do like a seven-game series, which is impossible for football, um, we would win that series. But I just felt like we didn't play well yesterday. I mean, first of all, Darnell, Darnell Washington getting hurt, the whole offense is done. Just like uh, Marvin Harrison getting hurt for Ohio State is bad. Like, because not only do we throw to him, we literally run his direction. Whatever way he's at, we run his way. Then we we were down to like three. We went from like six, seven edge rushes to like three. It was bad. Both teams were super hurt. That, that we And we just played terribly. There's no excuse. We just didn't play well. I think we're the better team. We just didn't play well. Ohio State deserved that win. I'm not going to lie, but I will take it. What's good, Tyrone? Ohio State kicker, sick. Oh, yeah, he done. Go crazy on that like button. Let him know, Tyrone. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. We got, got lucky. Here we go. Got him. All right, bet. Let me try to find a link where I'm not as... I think I'm a little bit behind. It's a lot of games going on right now. It's pretty nice. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. Let me see who's behind or ahead. Uh, Montez sweat off size is not good. That's not good. We can't have those. Montez sweat off size. That's what I'm seeing right now. Let me see. This one's at 14, 18. This one's at. Okay, this one's ahead of that. Okay. And this one's ahead of that. All right, so Sunday Ticket is ahead of Vola Kid and all of those. So I know I'm behind. I know I'm behind. What's good, everybody? How you feel about the TCU-Michigan game? That was really fun to watch. Both of those games were really fun to watch. Like, as long as you're not a fan of either of those four teams, you had the time of your life watching that. So the Michigan-TCU game was more fun, more fun for me to watch because my heart was in my stomach the whole Georgia game. Then it got to a certain point where I was like, oh, yeah, we lost. So, um... That wasn't fun. It was it's just basically long story short, it wasn't fun. The Georgia game wasn't fun, but TCU Michigan was a great game to watch. I feel like again, if you were if you're not a fan of either of the four teams, that was like the best Saturday of college football ever, you could argue. But for me as a Georgia fan, that second game wasn't fun. But that first game was super fun. I was having fun. I was having a lot of fun. All right, second and 20. Incomplete. Incomplete pass. We will take the holding and the incomplete afterwards. They kick a folded under pressure. Yeah, because it's crazy because he's actually a really good kicker. You could argue he's one of the best kickers in college football. And that's why some people feel like Vegas made a call or something. Because for him to miss it that bad, it's like for him to be that good of a kicker and miss it that bad, that was a little weird. Even as a Georgia Bulldog fan, I'm like, that's a little crazy. I want that's a, I thought that was Brandon Sheriff when I first saw him. What's good, London? Wolverines go crazy. <laughs> one Ohio State the win. I always liked them after L Louisville. I ain't mad at that, especially as a Commanders fans, since we have so many players on our team that are Ohio State alum, uh, alumni. If I wasn't a Georgia Bulldog fan, I probably would have been rooting for Ohio State as well, just because Terry McLaurin, Chase Young, Curtis Samuel, just to see all of those guys happy, I would have been happy about that. Um, oh, yes, sir. 
That boy Deron Payne, thank you. That man trying to get paid, man. That man Deron Payne trying to get paid. It wasn't even touched. And at 12 o'clock. Oh, yeah, and it hit like, like right at 12. It was going into the new year. It was crazy. That was crazy. Deron Payne now has 10.5 sacks. Has officially crossed over double digits. We still have an entire game to go today and another game to go next week. That man Payne is not playing with y'all. And it is fourth and 30, so they have to kick. Good job, defense. Looking a little ugly at the beginning of the series. The very beginning of the series is looking a little rough. A little rough, I'm not going to lie. But they clutched up. They got it together. Uh, I guess they just started off a little bad. But I'm loving what I'm seeing from Chase Young, man. Even when he's not the one making the play, he's affecting the play. And, yeah, Deron Payne was Pro Bowl sub, but it, yeah, snub, but at least he's an alternate. So, you know, he there may be a chance that he plays. Who knows? It just depends on what goes on. If somebody gets hurt, if somebody go, if somebody's team goes to the Super Bowl. But I do agree. I think Deron Payne should have made it straight up. 10.5 sacks as an interior defensive lineman and not being in the Pro Bowl, I think is criminal. You saw, I don't know if y'all saw this, but I saw a notification yesterday that um that the NFL is doing a new thing where the um and, and good return by Dax. I'll take that. That's that's a pretty good return from him. This might be a good day today. This is a good day today. Um they're doing a new thing where players vote within their position. They vote within their position for, like, who should make the All-Pro and stuff like that. I don't know if it's separate. I don't know if they're doing the normal All-Pro and then if they're doing that one. But I think that's pretty interesting. So, like, edge rushers are only going to vote for edge rushers. It's not everybody. Running backs are only going to vote for running backs. You know what I'm saying? So, I think that's really interesting. I want to see how that goes. I, I definitely want to see how that goes. And I think Deron Payne may be like a second or if they do a third team, maybe like a third team all pro because I feel like he may have more respect from the players than from normal fans that don't really watch football or maybe even coaches that don't watch everybody. I mean, there's a lot of teams throughout the NFL that we don't play this season and maybe they're not paying attention to how great of a season Deron Payne is having. But I think other defensive linemen probably would more so than anybody else. So maybe Deron Payne makes one of those little all pros. So we'll see. I doubt he makes first team or second team all pro, but if they do a third team, I think he should make it. I, d I agree. I definitely think he's a top five. Jonathan Allen definitely is making all pro for sure. At the very least, second team. Um, but I would like if if they do a third team, if they do a third team, I think Deron Payne deserves that at least. Stroud for QB. Okay, yeah, we got to talk about that. I tweeted about that last night. That was the best game, especially pocket presence wise and avoiding pressure staying poised and things like that that was the best game from cj stroud that i've ever seen and i've actually been starting to watch a lot of his games you know we're starting to get into the draft season like i told y'all a couple of months ago i haven't really been watching everybody like that i watched a lot of bryce young because a fellow sec sec guy i'm a georgia bulldog fan um but i haven't really watched cj stroud so lately i've been watching a lot of cj stroud and going into this game against ohio state i didn't expect him to be that good honestly oh touchdown bears that's good that's good touchdown bears we need the bears to win today to help our uh chances of making the playoffs so we need the bears to win we need to be rooting for the bears the vikings and um who was the other one y'all remember who the other one was we need to be rooting for the i said it in the video too we need to be rooting for the bears the vikings and and the Jets, the Bears, the Vikings, and the Jets. But yeah, going back, thank you, thank y'all, thank you for the Jets, thank you, thank you, Saucy, thank you, thank you, Fern, appreciate that. Um, so we need to be rooting for the Bears, the Vikings, and the Jets. But the uh, it sucks because the 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 uh, the the Seahawks and the Packers don't play till four twenty five. But we get to see Detroit and Chicago play right now, so we'll see how that goes as we're playing. Um, shouts out to Justin Fields. Thank goodness, man. Georgia, I mean, he's literally the Georgia and the Ohio State that just played in the playoffs, and now he's going out there and having a good start against Detroit. I like it. Maybe he's just feeding off of the energy from both teams. And a, a good first down run with Jonathan Williams. I'm surprised that Jonathan Williams got the first carry of the game for us. That's really interesting. But let's get it. Um, oh, yeah, in case y'all didn't know, Antonio Gibson, Cameron Curl, and Benjamin St. Juice are out today. So, I, you know, of course I'm upset about that. That's not good. But I think the thing that I'm probably most sad about, well, Cameron Crow and Benjamin St. Juice not playing are probably our biggest losses. But I was hoping Sam Howell would be our backup quarterback, but Taylor Heineke's our backup quarterback. So you never know what may happen. Um, but going back to C.J. Stroud, yeah, pocket presence-wise, 
um, avoiding pressure in the pocket, staying poised even though he's going to get hits to, to deliver a great pass, um, making plays off schedule. That's always been one of his biggest weaknesses and one of my gripes with him is that he doesn't necessarily make off schedule plays. He's great whenever the you know the, the everything is on schedule receivers are open offensive line blocks well all of that but when things break down i've always been worried about cj stroud's ability to make something out of nothing he made a lot of something out of a lot of nothings against my georgia bulldog so i earned a newfound respect for cj stroud uh, ryan day and whoever um put that scheme together for their offense was brilliant it was perfect shouts out to ohio state but i still feel like even with all of that cj stroud uh balled out and i'm i'm down to get him at first i was a little hesitant about drafting cj stroud but after that i'm like hey man we might we might need to take a look at cj stroud i may even trade up for him after that game and then yeah i don't know what's going on wentz wentz you good are you okay what just happened what's going on carson wentz how are we throwing interception already jonathan williams gets the first carry and then carson wentz throws an interception What's going on? Where where was all of that? What, what happened to all of that that you was doing in that one drive against the 49ers? Where did that go? But at least he threw an interception targeting Terry. Remember one of our biggest gripes against Carson Wentz is that he never targets Terry. But that was a terrible throw. Um, don't ever do that again, please. I beg you. But at least it was targeting Terry McLaurin. But that was just horrible read. It was two, it was two DBs, maybe a DB and a linebacker underneath. If you're going to throw that, you got to overthrow it at least to the sideline. Because Terry McLaurin had everybody else kind of beat. You throw it over their heads, you're good. You're pretty good. Um, but yeah, he underthrew it, and it was too. If if one guy didn't pick it off, it was gonna be another one. Um, so I already know the Heineke chance of starting. I already know the Heineke chance. Oh yeah, some people in the uh, stadium right now. John Com just tweeted Heineke Heineke chance are already starting. Uh, and yeah, no, I, I already was kind of like, I'd, I'd be cool with Stroud. I think Bryce Young is the better quarterback, but he, his huge weakness is that he's really small, like really small. And he's not just short like Russell Wilson and Kyler Murray. He's really skinny as well. Russell Wilson and Kyler Murray aren't, they're short, but they're not really skinny. They're not just like little twigs and short. Bryce Young is, is, tw is a twig and really short. So that's what I'm worried about. Definitely very worried about that. It's, but Bryce Young, outside of his how small he is, the best quarterback. But I like CJ. After what I saw against Georgia, I like what uh, I like what I saw from CJ Stroud enough to where I'd be willing to trade up for CJ Stroud. I, I I saw everything I needed to see. I feel like against the best defense he's played against all season, he had his best game. Um, because I feel like against Michigan, I feel like Georgia's defense is easily better than Michigan. I feel like. Our defense is easily better than other defenses that C.J. Stroud has struggled against in the regular season. He was struggling against, I forgot, one of those random, not even that good teams. I think he just had an off day. But when the when the moment mattered most and he needed to make the most plays, down one with all of that time left, he got his team in the field goal range, supposed field goal range. I liked what I saw from C.J. Stroud. So I'd be willing to trade up for him. But yeah, just to let y'all know the Heineke chants have already started in the stadium. Now it's third and five, so we need the defense to get off the field, please. I mean, yeah, that throw by Carson Wentz is awful. He stared Terry McLaurin down. He underthrew him. He didn't use the sideline. If Terry McLaurin was open uh, over over everybody. He threw it under. It was just terrible. It was just awful. And then great job by the defense, Danny Johnson in coverage. Thank you. Way to get off the field and give up at worst three points thank you danny johnson for that play great play great play great play what's good everybody that's just getting here make sure y'all like up the stream if you haven't already i really appreciate it make sure you like up the stream if you haven't already appreciate it was good she ate me was good was good happy new year's to ev to you and everybody as well our defense is our only bright spot of this team other than that this sucks <laughs> Only chance in this game is behind Nikki in. Happy New Year's. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, but Brian Robinson has to get the ball more. I don't know why Jonathan Williams got the first carry. I thought that was interesting. But shout out to Danny Johnson for that pass breakup. We are now down three to zero. I will take that after it after the interception Carson went through. I just it just felt like they were the Browns were gonna get a touchdown. So we'll take it. Happy New Year's, everybody. What's good? What's good? What's good? DMV representative. You guys want Wentz or Taylor? I want Howe. Me personally, I'm ready to just see what Howe can do, but we'll see. Howe's inactive, so even if Carson Wentz is, has the worst game in his life, Sam Howe can't play. We will go end up going back to Taylor Heineke. We'll see. Shouts out to the defense for bailing us out, though. After that interception, it just felt like the Browns were destined to get a touchdown. So shouts out to the defense for putting in that work. 
Also, DC has never had a defense better than 27th or something like that in nine years. Uh, happy New Year's, guys. Yes, sir. What would you give up to trade for a quarterback? I give up a lot of picks. I'm big on quarterback. I'm huge. I've been the one screaming for the past, at, at minimum, five years. Do what you got to do to get a quarterback. I said do what you got to do to get Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, anybody. I said do what you got to do to get um, a lot of quarterbacks that have passed by. Like, just, man, take them. Try, at least try it. You know what I'm saying? At least try it. At least give it a chance. That... that recycling quarterbacks picking up a veteran from somewhere else and trying to make it work it just hasn't worked i just yeah man i would give up anything for justin fields right now i don't care i don't care with the bear whatever the bears want give me justin fields the way he's playing right now with this run game with these receivers give me justin fields i remember when we were freaking out when justin fields was falling man i wanted him so bad bro and he was right there and reached for us to call up and get to just trade up like what three four picks maybe to get him he's now nah, you saying for the bears pick now nah, i'm saying for justin forgive me justin fields i will trade quite a bit for him i will trade quite a few guys for my boy justin went justin fields but again i'm biased it's not just because he's good at football but he's from atlanta so i would love that as well Taylor Heineke's from, you know, Metro Atlanta, but, you know, y'all already know how I feel about Taylor Heineke. I'm ready to get a new Atlanta quarterback. If I can, Justin Fields would be perfect. Obviously, but I'm being realistic. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can't get Justin Fields. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I I already know it would never happen in a million years, but I would, I would, just me dreaming, I would give up almost anything for justin fields lamar will be a free agent but we'll see how that goes ah that lamar jackson situation is a little tricky because it sounds like we're i mean i mean we're already struggling to pay deron Payne, and of course i would love to keep deron Payne. but if it's between lamar jackson and deron Payne, you go lamar jackson of course but like but my point is we're already worried about how we're going to pay deron Payne. Right now, the reason Lamar Jackson hasn't re-signed with the Ravens already long term is because they're not giving him as much money as he wants. So we're gonna have to give him, we're gonna have to give him big time money, big time money, huge money. And I don't know if we can afford it. I don't know. Maybe I can do a cap space breakdown video. Again, make sure you like up the stream if you haven't already. And yes, sir, that boy Jared Patterson. Okay, y'all DMV boy doing something on return. So I guess with Antonio Gibson out, even though Antonio Gibson. Um, what's it called? I hope he's back next week against the, the, the Cowboys. But Ron Rivera did say that Dax Milne wouldn't necessarily be the automatic kick returner. They said they're going to try some guys back there. And I'm not surprised that Jared Patterson is the first number called. And I like what I saw from him on that return. Wasn't the most explosive thing, but I definitely preferred that over than what we, what we may have gotten from Dax Milne. I like the fact that we're kind of having some kick return tryouts right now. Made a best man win type of thing. And I think Jared Patterson is up for the job. I like Jared Patterson on kickoff returns. I've always liked Jared Patterson on kickoff returns. I don't know what happened after that really good preseason last year where he was doing doing good returns, punt returns, kick returns, and then suddenly we just stopped doing it. You know, we just, Jared Patterson just was no longer involved. I don't know what's going on. Rico, why does it feel like we were to get a top QB in a draft? He would not develop at all. I don't know. I, I feel like we could. I feel like, I feel like, teams are having a higher success rate at developing quarterbacks than they used to i think everybody's just getting smarter the nfl's getting smarter coaches are getting smarter gms are getting smarter They're, i think everybody's learning how to build teams because 20 years ago it's highly unlikely josh allen becomes who he does pat mahomes J jalen hurts justin fields trevor lawrence you know just you know it uh, it just seems like guys have figured out the formula a little bit better. Now, it's not automatic. I'm not necessarily saying we can draft Anthony Richardson. And he's going to become Josh Allen. But I'm definitely saying that now in the NFL, especially with, you know, NFL offenses willing to incorporate more college offensive stuff into their schemes and, and things like that, I think quarterbacks are working out more often. I'm not saying it's automatic. I'm not saying we're going to draft Anthony Richardson and he's going to be just as good as Justin Herbert automatically. Um, and shouts out to the offense, man. We're moving the ball right now. Good job. I will take that. Thank you. Thank you, Logan Thomas, for that one. Good throw. Carson went settle in, bro. We need this win. I miss DeAndre Carter as well. But, yeah, my point is um, I don't even think it's necessarily like I have faith in us to develop a quarterback specifically. I just think the overall the NFL overall is getting better at developing quarterbacks, especially quarterbacks with a lot of talent that they just need to be refined a little bit. Now, 
guys like uh what's the quarterback for the Texans? Um Davis Mills. He's a guy that comes in with a relatively decent floor, but he doesn't have a high ceiling. So I'm not surprised that he struggled. But like the toolsy guys, like the Justin Herberts, the Josh Allens, the Pat Mahomeses, the Justin Fields, the Trevor Lawrences, those guys seem to be working out more often than we used to, like 10, 10, even just 10 years ago. Not even that long ago, guys like that, you draft them. Like Marcus Mariota, the Tennessee Titans did him no favors when they drafted him and tried to force him to play in a pro-style offense. Now NFL teams are better at uh, – you know, developing an offense around their their raw quarterback and making things work around them. So I think we could draft a quarterback and make it work. I have faith. And I mean, Ken, Ken Zampezi, a lot of people love him. I haven't seen anything necessarily from him yet on our end. But um, and then yeah, shouts out to that move with the move in the pile, Brian Robinson, the offensive line, everybody that was a part of that. I love those type of runs. Absolutely love those type of runs. Keep that going. Keep that going. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're moving the ball, man. We are better than the Browns. Definitely. Do you think this 2023 class is better than the 2020? 2020? Who was the 2020 again? More than likely, the answer is no. This 2023 class is a little, little scary. Again, Bryce Young, I feel like, is the best quarterback easily if you're ignoring how small he is and fragile. And then C.J. Stroud has a lot of potential. Before this game against Georgia last night, I was, I was definitely worried about him. Um... But he showed me enough yesterday to where, like, he definitely increased my respect for him. And I'm, I am I want to draft him as a uh, as a Commanders fan. Um, Burrow, Tua, Herb. Yep. Your Bulldogs escaped my Buckeyes last night. I mean, I, I talked about this earlier. Um, but just to summarize real, real quick, I still feel like Georgia is the better team. But I feel like Ohio State deserved that win and they played better. They schemed better. I feel like even coming out of halftime, y'all made better adjustments. You know what I'm saying? So I got to give I gotta give Ohio State their credit. That that That's a weird. But that's just, you know, going from Alabama. Now Georgia is the new dynasty. Basically, good teams find a way to win. I wish the commanders can be like that. No, no matter how poorly they play, at the end of the day, they find a way to win somehow. Whether it's luck, whether it's the refs liking them, some teams are just meant to win. If it's Vegas making a call, I can't wait for the commanders to become that team if we ever do. It's kind of like the Chiefs. No matter what, or even the Cowboys, the Cowboys just kind of fold on themselves. But the NFL does everything they can for the Cowboys is to win games they do everything they can the, the refs vegas and I, I you know i can admit georgia gets that it seems like we get that type of treatment now the refs college refs suck period but i do feel like if anything georgia gets the benefit of the doubt on a lot of calls which the commanders are the exact opposite so i get to witness both for as a fan base i get to witness my georgia bulldogs get the cowboys type of calls and i get to witness my commanders get hated on by the refs so it's kind of fun it's kind of fun. Yeah, please go for this fourth and one. I say go for it. Especially where we are in the field, you got to go for that. My boy Jaden L with the donation, man. Appreciate that big time. Always pulling up in donation. Watching nine games. How are you doing it? It would be nice to get your belated birthday gift, but I don't know where you live. Okay, Jaden, I'm going to have to hit you up. Appreciate the donation, man. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. You're watching nine games, right? You're watching uh, Red Zone and all of that? And appreciate that, Jaden. How are you doing over there, man? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. All right, we did not get it. We didn't get it? Uh, I didn't like that play by Scott Turner. You take out Brian Robinson on fourth and one? That's a terrible decision by Scott Turner. That is a, that is an awful decision by Scott Turner. You take out Brian Robinson on fourth and one. At the very least, QB sneak it, but don't spread the ball like we're going to outrun these guys. I don't know what the I don't know what the thought process was there. Yeah, I hated that play call. I hated that play call from Scott Turner. You sold that one. You sold that one, Scott Turner. But yeah, I gotta admit, my Georgia Bulldogs do get like Cowboys type of calls. Now there's some calls where we get hated on. I remember that Tennessee game that should have been a safety from Jalen Carter on Hendon Hooker. They didn't call a safety. They didn't call it a touchdown safety. Nothing. That was weird. But overall, and then I think there were a couple of calls against Ohio State. I remember. And I was like, eh, ref's kind of tripping. Um, but for the most part, I can admit that Georgia gets the benefit of the doubt of calls. They're the exact antithesis of what the uh, how the refs treat the commanders. Like, literally the exact opposite. 
Um, so I gotta admit, as a Georgia Bulldog fan, I gotta admit that. I mean, that's what makes dynasties because Alabama used to get calls that other teams wouldn't get. Um, back when they were dominating, literally just two years ago and and before. So, you know, it is what it is. That just goes to show that we are the next dynasty because we're just destined to win. Whether it's the refs, whether it's Vegas, Georgia's just gonna end up winning somehow. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Um, and I wish I just want my commanders to get to that point. But I think Dan Snyder has to sell the team and you also have to be more marketable. I think we need an exciting quarterback that can sell tickets and get views because the NFL wants exciting football to make it as far as possible in the playoffs and to make it to the Super Bowl. They want to sell tickets. They want to get as much marketing money from all of those Super Bowl commercials. So they're trying to get the best quarterbacks into the Super Bowl. So you can't tell me that the NFL doesn't do what they have to to uh, influence games. To, for like guys like Pat Mahomes and Josh Allen and those guys to make it to the Super Bowl. They don't want Jimmy Garoppolo in the Super Bowl if they can avoid it. They, they, don't, want, they don't want guys like that. So I think if we, when Dan Snyder sells the team and we get a really exciting quarterback, I think we, I think we may start to get the benefit of the doubt of some calls from the refs. At least be even. May not even be necessarily beneficial. At least even it out though. You need to play tug of war with your Brody and Aja. I actually did a few days ago. And yeah, man, shouts out to Justin Fields, man. We need the Bears to beat the Lions real bad today because right now, oh my Lord, that hit on that commercial. Um, that USFL commercial. Um, yeah, we should have QB sneaked or ran it in with Brian Robinson. I can give you eight plays that were better than what we just did. And then Nick Chubb is out here getting 14 yards like it's nothing. Oh my Lord. Hey, man, chill out, man. Chill out, Nick Chubb. As a Georgia Bulldogs fan, I need you to do, do me one favor and just chill out today. Just give, just give me one day, Nick Chubb. You can go crazy next week, but just this week, chill out, Nick Chubb, all right? Please. Please chill out, Nick Chubb. But, yeah, man, I think the commanders will start to get the benefit of the doubt with some calls and stuff like that. Get some Vegas get some Vegas decisions in to help us win some games once all of that happens. Oh, Lord, it's ugly, man. It's ugly again, man. He's a Georgia Bulldog. What can I say, man? Come on, Justin Fields. We need you to get these touchdowns. We need y'all to beat the Lions because right now the commanders look like they don't want to win. Bruh, Rich, I'm trying, bruh. RBU going crazy. I'm, bruh, I'm trying, man. I tried. I asked him as a Georgia Bulldog fan, chill out for a day. Just give me a day, Nick Chubb. From a Georgia Bulldog fan to another Georgia Bulldog fan, Nick Chubb has 15 yards per carry right now. Can we chill out, Nick Chubb? Again, Georgia Bulldog fan to Georgia Bulldog fan, just do me a favor today and just chill out. You're not making the playoffs. You don't need this win. Just chill out. You already made the Pro Bowl. There's nothing for you to gain. Just chill out, please. Just take your time. My boy Jay Nell, all pro, all pro sponsor again, man. Appreciate that big time. Third pass by Wentz. Those interceptions right off the bat. Try to throw the McLaurin cover by three players. It was awful. It was an awful decision, Jaden. And then now... Scott Turner sold the fourth and one attempt with that terrible play call. The defense can't stop Nick Chubb right up the middle. I don't know what's going on. I have no idea what's going on. We got to be better, man. Start Sam Howell next week. I think Sam. I think there is a good chance that Sam Howell can end up starting next week, whether we win or lose. Because if we win and we have a good chance of making the playoffs, he may end up playing anyway. I don't know what F.L. Bot is doing. I, I have no idea. I can't explain that one. Couldn't tell you what F.L. Bot was doing that play. Um, But <laughs> but uh, what's it called? I, <laughs> I don't know what F.L. Bot was doing. Rico going to playing again. Nah, we need a... Uh, we need what's his face to get back in the kitchen. That was working the best. My playing thing wasn't working that well. It helped a little bit, but it was really my boy in the kitchen. Massive missing holding calls. I mean, again, the commanders don't get the, the never get the side of the ref, so I'm not surprised. Yeah, that man FL Bada a little strange for that one, man. I don't know what's going on with him. I don't know what that was. But I think that just goes to show you know how defensive a, a lot of defensive linemen have been complaining about the fact that um that the edge rushers are struggling to make plays because they're so worried about uh they're so worried about hitting the quarterback and getting a penalty and or a fine. So that may have been one of those, even though that was still really dumb. But that may have been one of them. That may have been one of them. But, hey, defense bails us out again. Bimba don't break. I will take it. Yes, sir, Yoshi. I will take 6-0, to zero, I guess. But offense got to figure something out. Defense got to figure out how to stop the run. Again, make sure you like up the stream if you haven't already. We got 280 people in here. 
um but only 55 likes so make sure y'all like up the stream i know it doesn't feel like a good time i know we're not in the best of moods right now because scott turner selling carson wentz is selling the middle of the defense is selling but you know but hey on the bright side justin fields is, is performing well against the detroit lions right now and that's helping us wait what's the flag going now What's going on with the flag? Yes, sir. Yeah, the jet. The Jets had uh, start playing at 4 p.m. I believe. I believe the Jets start playing at 4 p.m. Carson Wentz already getting booed and all of that. Okay, so it was defensive offsides. They going for it now. Now they're going for it. Defensive offsides is crazy. That's insane. Because, like, why now? Why now? What's going on, Commanders? Like, where's, honestly, what's really going on right now? Come on, defense, man. Come on. Defense, offense, Scott Turner. What's going on, man? What's going on? What's going? What's going on, man? Come on, defense. Great style. Yes, sir. I will take it. I will take it, defense. My boy Big John 512 with the donation. Happy New Year's back to you as well, man. Thank you. Appreciate that. Appreciate that big time. My boy Big John. Yes, sir. And yes, sir, to the defense for making that play, man. Bailing us out. And I see, I see Rich using the gifs. That's funny. I haven't seen those in a long time. I appreciate you. I forgot all about those. Appreciate you using those. Oh, man, shouts out to the defense, man. Thank you. Chase Young on the play, man. Chase Young matters, bro. I'm telling y'all Chase Young matters. Chase Young has an impact on this game. He had a big impact in that 49ers game, even though it didn't matter because everybody else was so bad. Shouts out to Derek Forrest and Chase Young for that play, man. I will take it. Now, we start with the ball at a very ugly spot. We are not out of the woods yet, but thank you, defense, for bailing us out. We will take it. Three to zero is way more manageable than ten to zero. Chase Young is balling. I love it. Chase Young and Derek Forrest, great play by them. Great play by both of those guys. Keep Brian Robinson in the game, Scott Turner. Do not take him out. I don't care. Do not take him out. Don't play about that. We'll take the one-yard run with Brian Robinson. We'll see if we can convert this first down and get something going. The Browns have talent, but they just don't. It doesn't matter. They just don't go out there and perform. We are the better team coming into this game. There's no excuse. Go, go, man. Go make some shape. Man, shouts out to Brian Robinson, man. I will take whatever we can get from him right now. Keep him on the field. This is ugly territory. Very ugly territory. Browns have no receivers. Yeah, isn't Amari Cooper banged up a little? He's playing, but I think he's banged up. They still have a lot of talent, though. And nah, buddy, uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones, they got a few guys, man. They got a few guys. But the run game is what they're leaning on. Chubb ran to the three-yard line, play calling. Yeah, I'm going to need Nick Chubb to chill out right now, man. I'm going to need Nick Chubb to, to chill out, bro. Just as a, as a Bulldog fan to a Bulldog alumni, please just chill out. Yeah, now that pitch, that pitch to Jonathan Williams on fourth and one was like one of the worst play calls I've seen Scott Turner ever do. He has a lot. He has a lot of bad ones. A lot of bad ones. That may honestly, like if we were to do like an award show at the end of the season, Scott Turner's worst play calls, that, that's definitely in the running. If we were to do like five nominations, that fourth and one pitch to Jonathan Williams taking Brian Robinson out of the game, definitely may be up there in the top five, which is, it's a shame that that's not the worst one automatically, like. It's a shame where there may be enough more, like a few more of them to the point that where we don't even know. We don't even know if that's the worst one because that's really bad. We win this game, Scott Turner must go. <laughs> All right, New Orleans is beating Philly. Man, I know Atlanta's fun right now, man. I was da I was downtown for everything. I was there when the, uh, when the peach dropped. I was there when the, the the game and everything. I had my phone. It was crazy. People were. It was so chaotic because I didn't know if yelling meant like it was so many bars around too and everything. We were like downtown Atlanta. 
And it's so many bars and people in the bars. Whenever I heard yelling, I didn't know if it was Ohio State fans or Georgia fans. I got a heart attack every time I heard yelling. I didn't know what was going on. And the fact that Buddy missed the field goal literally with like one second left as the peach dropped, it was crazy. That was insane. That was, I'll never forget that. I'll never forget that. My boy Jay Nell with another donation, man. You're going crazy, man. Got to do the Dragon Ball Z one for that. Appreciate that. God, Chubb is ready to score. Man, tell my boy Nick Chubb. He's not listening to me. I'm a diehard Georgia Bulldog fan for life, and he's not listening to me. So maybe one of y'all can get to him. Justin Fields having 105 yards rushing with only five carries is crazy. That's insane. 105 yards already is crazy in itself. And the fact that he has that on just five carries through just, what, the first quarter? We're still only in the first quarter of that game, maybe? Where are we at in that game? Yeah, we're still on. We just got to the second quarter, just like our game. That's ridiculous. Three and out. Ohio State should have won. Throw the ball. <laughs> Can't even get out of the end zone. Hey, man. Scott Turner's weird like that, man. I ain't got nothing for you. I ain't got nothing for you. That man, Scott Turner's an odd man. Odd man. I mean, this just also goes to show that they don't trust Carson Wentz to make the right play as well. That's another problem. My Michigan Wolverines let me down. Now, I really, honestly, I was one of those people that literally expected Michigan to win by 15 points or more. Like, if I, if I were a betting person and put money on games, I would have bet on Michigan to definitely uh, cover and, like, completely dominate TCU. I was so surprised watching that game. I was so surprised. False start on the defense. Yeah, nah, I, I can admit I was wrong. Going into that, I don't know who, I don't know if anybody else, I don't know if anybody else predicted TCU to win that game. I know I didn't. Just looking at the math, looking at the players, how they match up. Mano Imano, I I thought, I thought Michigan was gonna go in there and clean house. I thought Michigan had a better um, I thought the Michigan game would be a little bit more distant in Michigan's favor than the Georgia Ohio State game. I thought the Georgia Ohio State game would um would be close. I didn't think it would be like that. I thought we would win by like seven, ten points. But I thought Michigan was gonna win by like maybe even 20. I thought so I I was completely wrong on everything as far as analysis goes. Gigi Rico from a Buckeyes fan, that was an incredible game. Now, I'll never forget that game. I have nothing but respect for CJ Stroud. After that game, I want my commanders to trade up for him. I have nothing but respect. Again, I got even as a Georgia Bulldog fan, you know when you have a dynasty, when Vegas and the refs are on your side. And I can admit, some of those calls Georgia was getting, everybody doesn't get those calls. Alabama used to get those calls. I don't know if they get them anymore. We may be the new, we may be the new team in college football that gets all of the calls. I can admit Georgia Bulldogs got a couple of calls that like the commanders definitely wouldn't have gotten. For sure wouldn't have gotten. Definitely would not have gotten. So I can admit that for my Georgia Bulldog. My boy Sports PSP, appreciate you pulling back up and donating big time, man. Thank you. Washington fans deserve better by going with Heineken instead of Wentz. I will do a video on this on my YouTube channel and check it out. Oh, yeah, man. Definitely make sure uh, y'all check out my boy Sports PSP, man. Check out his video. He's going to break down, especially if you're a Taylor Heineken fan. Make sure you check out that video, man. I appreciate that. Appreciate the donation. Appreciate the donation. Shroud of Richardson, if you're... I know you're a high, uh, high ceilings. If you asked me before last night, I would have said Richardson easily because I am a tools guy. I'm a tools guy. You bring them in, you coach them up, and, and you develop them. But after what I saw from C.J. Stroud, again, my biggest problem with C.J. Stroud before last night was, first of all, has he played really good defenses outside of Michigan? Has he played really good defenses? And also, can he make off-schedule plays? Can he make plays off schedule when the receivers aren't open, when the offensive line doesn't have perfect blocking? Can he make the right plays? And C.J. Stroud did everything right. C.J. Stroud, I feel like, is the best quarterback Georgia has played at the very least this season, by far. At the very least this season, we can even argue last year. The game he had may be even better than what Bryce Young gave us last year. So I think Bryce Young is still the better quarterback, even though I worry about his size. But C.J. Stroud had the best quarterback game I've seen in a long time. And I don't know what's going on with Carson Wentz. I'm trying to distract myself from this Carson Wentz failure by continuing to talk about the college football playoffs. I don't know what Wentz is doing at all right now. I mean, underthrown and everything. I, I, I couldn't tell you. I couldn't tell you. It looks like Heineke's probably going to go in this game very soon. 
very soon. What's good, Larry? What's happening with you? I know you was dying inside watching that Georgia Bulldogs game too, man. And I know we're dying inside right now watching Wentz try to sell the game. It's no reason we're only down 3-0. to zero. The Browns need to be ashamed of themselves for only being up 3-0 to zero right now. But, yeah, man, um, I would prefer to continue to talk about C.J. Stroud in Ohio State and Georgia, TCU, and Michigan more than what I got going on right now. We can even talk about uh, we can talk about my boy Keely Ringo because, again, he's going to – I think the best comparison for Keely Ringo, the best comp, is a more athletic Trevon Diggs. He's either – and Marcus Peters, you can even say. He's either going to make a game-winning interception or he's going to get burnt several times. And it can all happen in the same game. He can get burnt five times but also – lock up somebody for five seconds for no reason like he's just the most risk-taking bag technique having natural athleticism made in the lab length and speed guy that's doing it like you could argue keely ringo has one of the highest ceilings we've seen from a corner in a long time but that man is trevon diggs if i've ever seen another trevon diggs that man is gonna get burnt 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 game winning interception burnt burnt game with an interception he's so weird man but i would be down to draft him i uh, joey porter's way safer but my boy keely ringo man uh, whoo we who getting boy him one-on-one -on -one with marvin harrison food food for marvin <laughs> food i love keely ringo man you my boy but keely ringo versus marvin harrison is a mismatch every play even though a couple of plays like i said if you go back and look keely ringo did a really good job of covering marvin harrison some plays but there were a lot of plays he got burnt easily what's good smokes what's good everybody weekly sunday sickness yeah we used to this we used to this leg i ain't gonna lie this about normal this about normal who want to go just to get blown up like i don't know what he be seeing Fire Ron, such a bad head coach. Yeah, we're going to end up going back to Taylor at some point. I wouldn't be surprised if Taylor Heineke is just starting quarterback next drive. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm really upset at the fact that Sam Howell is inactive. So say Carson Wentz is failing. Say we bring Taylor Heineke back in and he gets hurt. We have to go back to Carson Wentz because Sam Howell is not active. He's literally legally not allowed to play. And I will take that Montez Sweat sack. I will take that. Thank you. Some positive news, finally. Defense is bailing us out right now. Chase Young and Montez Sweater, man. Chase Young is impacting football right now. He's impacting winning. That man is the definition of impact winning right now, man. That boy Chase Young, he's in on every play, it seems like. He's in on every play. All right. But right now, our defense is bailing us out completely. Our defense is literally bailing us out. Jonathan Allen looks to be hurt, though, which kind of sucks. We'll see how that goes. I need an update on that. I need an update on that one. Like I said, I've been team. My whole thing was I want to see what Carson Wentz looks like when we run the ball as much as we've done with Taylor Heineke. But I've been start Sam Howe since Carson Wentz got hurt. So don't look at me. That man Chase Young is having himself a game. Well, at least Jonathan Allen's walking off on his own. He looks hurt, but at least he's walking off on his own. I would love to see how, but again, he's inactive, so he can't play in this game no matter what happens. What's good, Otis? Yes, sir, my Georgia Bulldogs. We didn't deserve to win that game, but I will take it. My boy MTM with the donation. Yes, sir. Appreciate that, Rico 2023. We need to be, we need to clean house, including Rivera. You sick of it? My boy is sick of it. I appreciate the donation, though, but my boy over there is sick of Rivera and everything he got going on. Now, Chase Young is balling today, though. Chase Young's about to have another one of those highest pro football focus grades on the team type of days. And Carson Wentz is going to leave with like a 23 grade, lowest of all time. Yeah, Chase is balling out. Chase is a part of everything. That goal line stand on fourth and one, Chase Young and Derek Forrest on that. Whose name do you, do you hear most often? Who, who Who's in common right there? What's the name that's in common right there? Chase Young, the common denominator. Rico, I told you we not making the play. Bro, I'm telling you, bro, we can still can. Right now, Detroit's losing. No, oh, no, never mind. Detroit's winning. Never mind. They scored a touchdown. My fault. We need Detroit to lose. We need the Seahawks to lose. We need the we need the Bears to beat the Detroit Lions. We need the Jets to beat the Seahawks. We need Minnesota to beat Green Bay. All of which is possible, but it's not very likely. But we'll see. They're not going back to Taylor. Taylor had five turnovers in the last three games. Yeah, true. Rico, it's over, bro. 
Just said they going they going crazy talking about the crows. Classic Washington New Year's lost. <laughs> Rico, Rico told you he's not making the playoffs. Yeah, man, it's ugly. Well, yeah, Logan Thomas is technically the third string quarterback against Sam Howell's inactive. So if he gets that bad, you want to try set you want to try Logan Thomas at quarterback. Mahomes pulled a Mariota. What'd he do? Not good enough to make the playoffs. I mean, I think we can. Now, when we get to the playoffs, I don't know. The only reason I would like to play the Vikings if we do make the playoffs. That's my best hope. I feel like that's our best hope of winning a playoff game if we make it, if we barely squeeze in. If we scratch and claw our way in, trip and fall, and accidentally make it to the playoffs like we did Ron Rivera's first year, where we don't necessarily deserve to make it, but we end up making it. Um, I feel like I would prefer to play the Vikings more than anybody else. I feel like they're definitely more beatable than the 49ers, and I don't want to see the Eagles again because I feel like they're not going to play with us after the way we did them. I feel like they're not going to. They're going to game plan. They're going to have us. They're going to have pictures of Commanders players on their mirrors when they're working out and everything. It's going to be like a completely different game. I'm scared. All right, third and eight. Come on, get off the field, defense. Came off the – yeah, we came off the bye literally playing worse. I don't know what happened. I thought we would come out of the bye and play better, if anything. We literally got worse. We were playing better before the bye week. All right, defense, get off the field on third and eight, man, please. Offense, I don't I don't even know what to tell you with the offense right now. Scott Turner's not good. Carson Wentz is awful. I don't know what's going on, honestly. I honestly don't know what's going on. All right, defense stepped up big time on third and eight. I will take it, third and eight. I will take it. I will take it. I don't know what that was. I don't know what any of that was, but I will take it. Thank you, defense. Again, if you haven't liked the stream yet, please leave a like on the stream if you haven't. I really appreciate it. That was a terrible play. I don't know what that was. Um, right now, both teams just look like neither of us want to win. I'm not going to lie. It literally looks like neither team wants to win. I don't know what's going on with F.A. Obata. I don't know if he has COVID and something's affecting his brain, but he's just not having a good day today, man. I don't know what is going on with my boy F.A. Obata today. I mean, he's just going to throw – how you just going to throw the ball to your tackle? Like, what is going on right now? Somebody please explain to me – why both of us don't – neither of us look like we belong in the NFL right now. Neither team, especially on offense. Our offense and the, and the Cleveland Browns offense, both of those just look like we don't deserve to be on the NFL. NFL Botta right now is single-handedly trying to give the Browns the game. I don't know what's going on with him. You would think after the first time he did it, the coaches would tell him, don't do that again. What do he do? Go out there and do it again. I don't understand. I don't understand. But, yeah, offense, we got to go out there and score a touchdown, man. We got to take the lead something. You got to score points this drive. Wentz, I don't know what you're doing. Can we, can we please stop being so terrible? I would love that. All right, we're starting with the ball at the four-yard line, which isn't ideal, but, hey, man, it's better than the Cleveland Browns scoring points. Yeah, I don't – FL body, you good? Like, are you straight? Everything's good? Everything's good with you? <laughs> body ate fried chicken on the sideline. That was a great return. I even went to the sideline and everything. That was a great return. All right, man. We're down to a little under 12 minutes left in the second. Uh, right now, the offense is atrocious. Scott Turner's bad. Carson Wentz is even worse. Um, I haven't actually – we haven't even really had a chance to complain about the offensive line just yet. We've had a lot of really bad field positioning between the defense allowing basically being bend but don't break. But, hey, man, they're clutching up when we need them to. And right now, the Browns only have three points. They should have way more. Rico, I bet you a strip sack is coming, bro. Don't do that to us, man. Don't do that to us, man. Don't do that to us. Now, that's hilarious that the FedEx field is already chanting for Heineke, though. Chase Young walks up to Carson Wentz, hugs him, and says, you got this. Really? No, oh, Chase Young being a leader right now. Carson Wentz, you're the quarterback. You should be the leader, but we already knew even when we got you. Even if you're good on the field, you're not that great of a leader in the locker room, but we'll see. All three of Washington's drives have ended in turnovers. Uh, yeah, true. Two interceptions and not getting the fourth down. Bro, I have no idea how it's only 3-0 to zero right now. The Browns literally are trying to let us win. They're literally like, please, Commanders, win this game. Please, Commanders, win. And we just don't want to take it. Literally just don't want to take it. Scott Turner's calling bad plays. Carson Wentz is just playing terribly. So, I don't know. The Browns are literally trying to give us the game and we won't take it. We're just playing hot potato right now with the game on the line.
Could we give Hal someone else's jersey and let him play today? Hey, man, we might be able to try it. We might, we may be able to try it. Throw him out there with like a obvious a jersey that's obviously not his too, like a ninety, like a ninety, uh, like a ninety-eight or something, like a ninety-eight, a smooth little ninety-eight. You guys wanted the big on. Since Scott to the Pee Wee Leagues for training, Wentz has two completions and two interceptions. Yes, sir. That's the that's the ultra stat line. That's the stat line. Matter of fact, we can go look right now. That's the stat line. Two for six. Two completions, two interceptions. That's a stat line. That's a stat line. Well, one really interesting thing, though, is that we've already sacked Deshaun Watson four times. It should have been five, but whatever that F.A. Obada thing was, I should have been five or six for real. So we, we getting that Deshaun Watson. We're going for 10 sacks today. I'm not going to lie. We going for 10. Everything else looks terrible, though. Any other statistic you look at, we're awful. Brian Robinson, four-yard run to start. Thank you. Keep Brian Robinson on the field as much as you can. And don't run don't run uh, sweeps with uh, Jonathan Williams on fourth and one ever again in your life, Scott Turner. Never call that again. And this Broncos-Chiefs game is actually closer than it should be. But then again, the Chiefs, I think, I think the Chiefs went up big against the Broncos last time they played them earlier this season. And they just kind of took their foot off the brakes and uh, took their foot off the gas and then just ended up letting the Broncos come back. Looks like they're getting off to an early start with that philosophy today. V Rob up the middle. Yeah, keep that going. He got a he got a man, but half the time he plays for the other team. <laughs> Please, Carson Wentz. We can't afford another interception, bro. Run the ball with Brian Robinson and make things work, bro. He said think it's not illegal yet. Look at that. Three straight Brian Robinson what runs. And guess what? We get 14 yards out of it total on the three runs. That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. All you got to do, run the ball with Brian Robinson, throw it occasionally to keep the defense on their heels, and do that, man. Brian Robinson should have got the carry on fourth and one a long time ago, and we probably would have three or, four, three or seven points on the board by now. But, you know, Scott Turner weird for that. Scott Turner weird for that. Carolina is beating... The Buccaneers right now. I just don't understand what the Buccaneers are trying to do this season. I honestly don't. I, don't, I really don't get it, me personally. That boy Chase Young was not playing with Carson Wentz. All right, they're stopping us now. No gain on the first down run for Brian Robinson. You got to you gotta throw the ball. You can't win with only running, but you can't win with only running. But boy, Carson Wentz and Scott Turner, y'all got to get it together. I don't even think we can blame offensive line yet. It's just Carson Wentz and, and and Scott Turner. Jonathan Allen is questionable to return. Thank you for the update, Rich. That is sad to hear, but we'll see. Man, Carson Wentz, we got to be better, man. Straight up, man. Straight up. Straight up. Straight up, Wentz. No excuse. There we go. That's a good throw. Okay. Carson went to Jahan Dotson, the quarterback that was giving Jahan Dotson the ball when Jahan Dotson was leading the NFL and receiving touchdowns. Him and Stephon Diggs were tied out of the entire NFL. Like more than Justin Jefferson, more than Cooper Cup, more than Travis Kelsey through the first three games of the season. This is the quarterback that was doing it with them, but Carson Wentz looks terrible so far up into that throw. So we'll see how this goes. I don't know. I just want to see him basically just – replicate what he did in that 149ers drive just do that over and over again we should be straight right i feel like I feel like that's good enough to win today just make it easy for him make it make it easier for him okay jonathan williams for a first down okay i will take it i will take it i think they expected us to run that that i mean to throw the ball maybe because that run looked a little too easy that run looked a little too easy. I think they thought we were going to run the um, throw the ball, and we just ran it right past them. Ran it right past them. Travis Etienne just ran for 62 yards on one run. Like, mercy. All right, come on. Let's get it. Come on, Scott Turner. Cook something up for us, man. We need it. We need it big time right now, man. All right, we ran it again on first and 10. Making it second and seven with Brian Robinson, three-yard gain. 
I definitely do miss Antonio Gibson, but it is what it is. Jonathan Williams isn't bad. He's not. He's a downgrade from Antonio Gibson overall, but he's not bad. My boy Jay Nell with another donation, man. Appreciate that big time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We need Taylor. I right, well, we'll see, man. Cause Carson Wentz, he's starting to cook something up, but so far he's looked awful. So far he's looked absolutely terrible. Taylor Heineke would have got benched for what Carson Wentz has done so far this game. So you can tell Rivera definitely prefers Carson Wentz. Definitely prefers him. Well, there we go. Carson Wentz sack. Carson Wentz sack. Loss of 9, 10 yards, too. That one hurts. Third and 17 sucks. Third and 17 is terrible. Terrible. Yeah, I agree. You you can't blame Carson Wentz for that one. You, you can't. Great play, man. I will take that. Jahan Dawson is different, man. Because that wasn't that great of a throw. It was a little late. It was accurate, but late. You could argue it was, it was accurate, but it was a little late. Like, that throw should not have been that difficult. If he throws it a little bit sooner. A little bit sooner. I don't know. It was right there. It was accurate. It was just a little late. Like, a little bit sooner. Jahan Dawson, he doesn't have to do all of that to catch it. But still, a good throw. I'll take the throw. A good throw, a better catch, basically. And Brian Robinson's running his tail off right now. Do not take him off the field, please. If you're going to take him off the field, do it now. But when we get to this red zone, we get to this end zone, like first and goal, I need Brian Robinson on the field every play, period. I don't care about nothing else going on. Eagles are getting mutilated right now. They're down 10-0 to and allowing deep bombs to the Saints. Yeah, Dotson is a, we just had like, I mean, like a lot of us said after the, I mean, I coming out of the draft, I wasn't sure if Jahan, Dots, Jahan Dotson was necessarily a number one receiver. But after what I saw in training camp and stuff like that, I, just, I felt like we had two number one receivers in Terry McLaurin and Jahan Dotson, and it's proven to be a little true. Don't run them in the ground, though. I mean, that's why they're taking them off. That I mean, you definitely have a good point, Rich. Can't run them to the ground, but that's why I'm saying if you're going to take them out, take them out now, like while we're on like the 30-something yard line. I would like to see Jared Patterson get some carries. I would like to see Jared Patterson get some carries. But um, but yeah, man, I want to see. I, I would say take Brian Robinson out now. When we get to the first and goal and things like that, you better put him back in. Uh, that's how I feel about it. That's how I feel about it. But come on now, it's third and five. Third and five. After a one-yard Jonathan Williams run, I'm assuming we're probably going to throw the ball this next play, but we'll see how it goes. We got to get a please a touchdown, man. Please. I just, I'm nervous about a field goal, man. Our defense can only bail us out but so many times, man. The defense is playing their heart out right now. The fact that they've only allowed the Cleveland Browns to score three points is crazy. And the Panthers are up on the Buccaneers 14-0. And it looks like the Saints are probably about to go up on the Eagles 17-0. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. Oh, yes, sir. I told you we got to throw the ball. Good first down to Logan Thomas. Carson Wentz is settling in. Carson Wentz is settling in. He would look terrible the first, first couple of drives, but he's starting to settle in now. He's starting to settle in. He's starting to settle in. Good play, Carson Wentz. Good play. Okay, so the Saints ended up kicking a field goal, so they're up 13-0. Okay. I mean, it really doesn't affect anything if the Eagles win or not, so I really don't care personally. 
Um, but yeah, man, Carson Wentz starting to settle in. Scott Turner starting to settle in. We'll see how it goes. But I'm not going to lie. If Taylor Heineke throws those same exact two interceptions that Carson Wentz throws, he gets benched. Period. But Carson Wentz didn't. That shows that Ron Rivera prefers him. And maybe Ron Rivera made the right decision. We'll see. But it wasn't looking good at first. It's the red zone. We just had a two-yard run with Brian Robinson. And it's second and eight. Red zone to the 15-yard line, I believe. This drive started with 11 minutes and 48 seconds on the clock, and we now we are now down to the two-minute warning. I just want y'all to know that. Yeah, I, I agree that we need a dual-threat quarterback as well. I've been saying that for years, but a lot of people said don't risk it, but I've been saying dual-threat quarterback for a while, and that's what I've wanted. Um, But yeah, man, this drive started with a little under 12 minutes left in the second quarter, and we've taken it down to two minutes. That's what you got to do. We got to do that more often. McKissick is missed as well, yep. Play action boot right now, trust me. Hey, I'm down. I'm down, even though, you know, Carson Wentz, I feel like all of us in the chat are faster than him, but we'll see how it goes. But, yeah, man, we got to step up. This is the time. We need a touchdown. I'm nervous about a three points. But great drive by Scott Turner, and Carson Wentz has made a couple of good throws. Now, Scott Turner has been terrible up to this point, this drive, so don't get it confused. Don't, don't get me wrong. Scott Turner has been terrible, but this drive, this has been a good drive. It's been good play calling, I'm not going to lie. Carson Wentz has made some good throws. And, I mean, we went from 12 minutes left in the second to the two-minute warning. We still have the ball with second and eight. That's crazy. Would you send, you sent me something? Oh, yeah, Richie, I know about that. Yeah, man, it's crazy. Yeah, I know about that, Rich, man. It makes me sad, too, bro. Makes me sad, too. For my boy, the, I'm nervous even if we win the day with Wentz. Oh, yeah, nobody, nobody. I don't think that, I don't even think Carson Wentz himself is confident going into this Cowboys game. Even though... Even though the Cowboys are more than likely going to rest their starters against us, but we'll see. The Cowboys are more than likely going to rest their starters. So even with Carson Wentz at quarterback, we should win that. But then again, Carson Wentz is Carson Wentz, so who knows? Even if the Cowboys play their backups, there is a chance with Carson Wentz at quarterback that we could still lose that game. We got her rumors about Scott Turner gets his playbook from the Chiefs and Madden. <laughs> Let's show Rico so love. If you can't donate, then hit that like button. Let them know. Let me let me pin that comment. If you can't donate, at least hit the like button, man. I really appreciate that. My boy Big John, channel member in the building and all that. You feel me? Yes, sir. Make sure y'all hit that like button, man. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already, please like up the stream. Thank you for reminding me to say that, Big John. I've been so into the game. I didn't even think. I haven't said it in a while. Yeah, Joe Gibbs is in the building. All right, four-yard run by Brian Robinson, third and four again. Clock continues to go. Oh, Brown's not playing. They called the timeout. I'm not mad. I would have called the timeout, too, if I were them. I'm not going to lie. I would have called the timeout if I were the Browns as well. Do you think the Browns win? I don't. I feel like the commanders are better, but we're just not playing like it. We're just not playing like it. It's that simple. But it's third and four. Another timeout by the Browns. I feel like you got to get a touchdown here because the Browns are going to run this hurry-up offense and try to put up three more points anyway. And it will pretty much just erase what we did this drive if we don't get a field goal. He said i kick a field goal right now. Not even chance it. But, yeah, man, make sure you like up the stream if you haven't already. I really appreciate it. Um, but, yeah, man, third and four. Let's get this. Carson Wentz, we're going to need you on this third down. Hey, man, still 81 people in here. Like up the stream. Let them know, DMV representative, man. Appreciate that. Like up the stream, man. We pretty full in here, man. We need more likes on the stream. Like up the stream if you're just chilling in here. If you haven't done so yet, I really appreciate it. Free for y'all. It means the world to me. We're not playing like it. There's obvious one person not playing well. <laughs> and it's crazy because the Browns are underperforming as well. If you look at their team on paper, they should be better than who they are. We should be better than who we are. Man, we have run 17 plays, and it's just ridiculous, man. And Carson Wentz to Logan Thomas, man. Carson Wentz has found a way to unlock Logan Thomas. I will take it first and goal. This is where Brian Robinson eats. 
This is where Brian Robinson eats. This is where Jahan Dotson makes his money. And you never know. Maybe a Cam Sim signing. Maybe a Cam Sim sighting. You never know. Maybe a Cam Sim sighting. You never know. But I feel like, obviously, Brian Robinson and, um, and Jahan Dotson are our best guys for this situation. I feel like, obviously. But then again, the Browns may know that in game plan for that. So we'll see. But yeah, Carson Wentz, we need you right now, man. We really need you. This was a great drive. Remember, we got the ball with 11 minutes and 48 seconds left in the second. This was a this was a very long drive. We ate up. We're about to eat up over 10 minutes in this one drive. And if we score a touchdown, even better. You know what I'm saying? To go into halftime up seven to three, defense bailing our offense out. Two yard run with Brian Robinson on first down. I'm not mad at that. Brian Robinson two yard run on first down. I will take it. I will take that. We're right there, y'all. We are right there. I think I, I'm optimistic. I have a good feeling we're going to end up getting this touchdown. I'm not going to lie. We are where are we? Cleveland called their last timeout. We are on the three-yard line. It's a minute 47 seconds left. I think you got to get a touchdown because, again, Cleveland's trying to get the ball back. That's why they're calling those timeouts. They're trying to get the ball back to maybe put up some points before we go into halftime. I think you need to go get a touchdown. Brian Robinson and Jahan Dotson are your premier players in the red zone, but you can never forget about Terry McLaurin, who's easily a top eight wide receiver, arguably top five. So, I mean, and then Logan Thomas is a big target. We know what he does in the red zone. We saw last year, whenever he was playing, our red zone offense was efficient. Whenever he wasn't playing, our red zone offense was atrocious. For example, the Packers game. All right, we're down to the Cleveland one-yard line. Uh, Carson Wentz is extremely slow. I know. I told you. Like I said earlier, everybody in this chat is probably faster than Carson Wentz. But, I, hey, man, I'll take that two-yard gain, third and goal at the one-yard line. But Carson Wentz... Wish you could have scored there. That was terrible. I don't even know why he's this slow. What happened? For the Colts last year, he wasn't this slow and immobile. What changed? What changed? Does anybody know what happened to Carson Wentz? He didn't sustain a new injury. Why is he just suddenly slow since he's changed his jersey colors from blue and white to burgundy and gold? What changed? Am I missing something? Am I missing something? What changed? Yeah, Carson Wentz is just so slow, man. Carson Wentz slow. And we tried. We tried. It's fourth and goal now. Brian Robinson wasn't able to get the touchdown. Are we kicking the field goal or are we going for it? I personally would go for it, but hey, man. I would personally go for it, but yeah, man, why did we run that play with Carson Wentz but not run those type of plays with Taylor Heineke? Taylor Heineke would have got that touchdown. That irritates me that we didn't run the ball with Taylor Heineke, but suddenly we want to run the ball with Carson Wentz. I don't even get that. But we'll see. I would go for it and do a QB sneak me personally. But we'll see. It's only 23 seconds left in the uh, clock. So I say go for it. Carson Wentz is 6'5. This offensive line, if anything, can run block. I say QB sneak. For me, that's me. But then again, Scott Turner scares me. I feel like he's going to call some goofy, unnecessary play where Carson Wentz drops back and there's only one receiver with five DBs in the end zone looking for the ball. Or it's three receivers running to the same spot and everybody's covered by one DB. So I think with a 6'5 quarterback and an offensive line that if anything they can get pushed up front, that you do a QB sneak. Me personally, I feel like that's what you do, but we'll see. I, I think that's what you do, but we'll see. Carson Wentz is, we got to remember, Carson Wentz is 6'5". You know what I'm saying? Carson Wentz is 6'5". So I say do a QB sneak and just get the touchdown. I think that's the smartest play. We'll see, though. We'll see. Okay, touchdown. Thank you. Thank you. That was a perfect drive. If that drive doesn't really get any better than that to end the half. But we got a touchdown. We took up. 11 minutes and 20 seconds on that drive. How many plays did we run? How many plays was that drive? That, that drive was 21 plays, 96 yards. Remember, we started that drive on our own four-yard line. It was 11 minutes and 27 seconds taken up. That's as good of a drive gets. That's as good as a drive gets to end a quarter. We got the ball with almost 12 minutes left in the second quarter. It ate up the whole quarter and got a touchdown for it. 
So we will take it. Again, Carson Wentz is 6'5". You QB sneak that every time. You QB, you QB sneak that every time. I don't care. Let me go look. Oh, you wanted to know the time of possession? Let's go look right now. Team stats. The, the Browns have 9 minutes, 47 seconds. We have 19 minutes, 52 seconds. But before that drive, the Cleveland Browns had a longer time of possession. And then we just killed them with that last drive and got an additional 11 over 11 minutes. So, hey, man, shouts out to Carson Wentz and Scott Turner for that drive. Before that drive, they were awful. Awful. Scott Turner play calling terrible. Carson Wentz decision making and accuracy, awful. But that drive, they were on point. Offensive line. Outside of that one Carson Wentz sack was really was pretty good. I can give them credit for that. Great play by great job by the commander's offense in total. Scott Turner, Carson Wentz for that one drive. That one drive only, though. They were terrible up until that drive, but that was a masterful drive. That drive was a master class of how to eat up clock and score a touchdown. It's something about Scott Turner. Say what you want. Terrible play caller. All of that. But whenever you need a 12-minute 15 plus play drive Scott Turner can draw that up I don't know what it is it seems like he makes the difficult things easy and makes the easy things difficult because just you know how hard that is to draw up a drive like that when it was so obvious on fourth and one earlier to just run the ball with Brian Robinson he did that really terrible idea to do a, a sweep a halfback sweep with Jonathan Williams and it was like three guys on him in the backfield obvious terrible play calling but whenever you need a 12 minute 96 yard drive 21 plays scott turner's your guy he did it against the buccaneers last year he's done it a couple of times this year i don't know what it is but i will take it and i think that's the type of drive that switches momentum the defense is tired i think even coming out of halftime the defense is going to be tired and i think our offense can start to get something going i think they figure something out I think we're going to be able to move the ball against them. The defense just has to continue doing what they're doing. I think we win this game. Honestly, with the way this game is going right now, whoever's the first to reach 10 points maybe wins the game. Maybe the first to reach 14 points or more at this point. I think our defense is that good, and I think if our offense is explosive enough and can continue to have drives like that, the game is over in three drives. I mean, if you can get another 12-minute drive, which is hard to ask any offensive coordinator in NFL history to just draw up more than once in a game, but if you could do that two more times, the game is over. Literally, it's over, regardless of what the defense does. My boy Steve H with the donation, man. Appreciate that big time halftime hope and $5 hot dog. Yes, sir. Positive vibes for the second half. Rico Toronto, Canada, saying HTTC. What's good, man? Shouts out to Steve in, Tor in Toronto. What's good, man? My boy Jay Nell with another donation as well. Lions lead 20 to 10. That's sad to hear, but at least the commanders are winning. That's what matters most. We're rooting for the Lions to lose to the Bears, but at the same time, if the commanders win, it doesn't matter. And again, I think the Cowboys are probably going to sit their starters next week. So all we got to do is win this week, and then next week should be fairly smooth sailing. But then again, you never know what Scott Turner and Carson wins anyway. The Browns suck bad. They are a horrendous team. We won't be Dallas backups playing this way. It's a good point. I'm not going to lie. The Browns are terrible. Deshaun Watson himself is terrible. The team is underperforming beyond their talent, for sure. But at the end of the day, man, I'll take it. A win is a win type of thing. But, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I think that the Cowboys' backups with Cooper Rush may be better than the starting Cleveland Browns team we're playing right now. Cleveland Browns are playing terribly. The fact that we're only up 7-3 to three is, is bad in itself, but it's also a miracle because Carson Wentz threw two interceptions on, on our side of the field, mind you, and we escaped with only giving up three points. We went for it on fourth and one turnover on downs. Carson Wentz had two interceptions. Literally, out of our four drives, three have been turnovers. One with them being a turnover on downs, fourth and one. Terrible play to call by Scott Turner. And then the other one is that 12-minute touchdown drive, 21 plays. Our offense has no middle. We're either terrible or great. But that just sounds like Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz is either going to look like Matthew Stafford, Pat Mahomes some plays, or he's going to look like the worst quarterback of all time most plays. I would say like 60, at least 60% of the time he looks like he shouldn't be in the NFL. And then the other 40% he looks like an amazing quarterback. It's just annoying. High variance quarterbacks, man. They're, they're, just, they're here to give you heart attacks. That's, that's what they're supposed to do. Make sure y'all like up the stream, man. The Commanders have the lead. Like up the stream for the Commanders having the lead. It rhymes for a reason, y'all. I will take it up 7-3 to three against the Browns, who, whose offense is atrocious right now. It's Nick Chubb, but nobody. And I, I told y'all, I put in that call. 
as a Georgia Bulldog fan, I put in my call to Nick Chubb, my boy Nick Chubb, and told him, just chill out. Chill out today. Just chill out. We don't need that today. You had your fun in the first quarter. Chill out. Your Georgia, Our Georgia Georgia Bulldogs are going to the to, um, to the uh, to the Super Bowl. Just chill out. We don't need it. Landon Collins with the pick six. That's good to hear. I'm happy for him. I like Landon Collins. He left not because he didn't want to stay, but because the team didn't want him back. So I don't root against Landon Collins. The team loved him. The players loved him. I like to see good things for him. My boy, my boy said he already saw sub. Appreciate that, Walt. Appreciate that. All right, the Chiefs are now winning again. Yeah, man, shouts out to Landon Collins. That's crazy. They just activated Landon Collins from the practice squad the game we played them, the second game after our bye week. This is only his second, this is only his third game of the season, and he has a pick six like that. Shouts out to Landon Collins. He said TCU win the natty. Nah, I'm sorry, man. I mean, not even to be a biased Georgia Bulldog fan, I, I just don't see it. We'll see. I think because I think Ohio State is very underrated. And again, I think that game only went like that because CJ Stroud had the best game in his life. And if CJ Stroud can play like that all the time, I want us to trade up and get him. But can CJ Stroud play like that all the time? CJ Stroud had the game of his life against us. And, and I just I'm not sure if TCU can do that. They don't have Marvin Harrison Jr. They don't have CJ Stroud. They don't have I just it's ugly. It's ugly. And Ohio State is more likely to get good calls from the refs. And even against Georgia, the refs were on the Georgia side. Again, it's just it went from being Alabama getting all of the calls. And now Georgia's the new dynasty. We get maybe not all of the calls, but we get most of them. I can admit the refs, Vegas is on Georgia's side, but that's what it is when you have a dynasty. When you when you become that team in college football, the refs give you calls you don't deserve. I, I can admit it as a Georgia Bulldog fan. I can admit it. And I just, I don't even think TCU can beat us and the refs. I, I can admit it. I can admit it. I, I don't think TCU has the capacity for that, man. I don't. Ohio State, they don't have C.J. Stroud. They don't have Marvin Harrison Jr. And I don't think they can outplay the refs like, like Ohio State tried to. I don't think this game. I don't think it's gonna be a good game, honestly. I think I think we're gonna basically do to them what we did to uh, to Tennessee. I think we just gonna just go ahead and shut that down. Michigan smack Ohio State, Georgia barely escaped. I mean, yeah, if you're using that equation, true. If you're using that equation, true. I see what you're saying, Mr. Jones. But I just uh, I don't know, man. I don't see it. But then again, I didn't see TCU beating Michigan, so I could be wrong. I don't see it as a Georgia Bulldog fan. I think we're going to come in with a better game plan. I think we're going to take them more seriously than we took Ohio State. And again, the reason that Ohio State game, that Georgia-Ohio State game even goes the way it does is because C.J. Stroud has the best game I've ever seen him play easily. I don't even think it's up for debate. That's the best game he played. Georgia's defense is better than Michigan's defense, and C.J. Stroud struggled against Michigan. He made us look like the worst defense in college football. That was the best. That's arguably the best game a quarterback has had against Georgia in two years. So I just, I, I just don't see it. I, I just don't think TCU has it. Ohio State played the best game they could and still lost, even with Marvin Harrison out. But again, you can also say. I don't even want to talk injuries because Georgia had a lot of injuries as well, like just as bad. I don't even want to get into that debate. But I, one thing I can admit is that the refs were on our side. But again, that's just how college football works. The Alabama used to get all of the calls. Now we get all of the calls. It's just how it goes. We're that team for college football. So TCU has to beat Georgia and the refs. And that's coming from a Georgia Bulldog fan. You got to beat the refs when you play Georgia now because we get the calls. The, the refs just do that. Ohio was a team to beat Georgia. TCU don't got it in them. I, I pretty much agree. I felt like I felt like Ohio State matched up very well against um, Georgia as well. Like with their offensive, uh, with their offense, fi the offensive firepower that they have. Basically, C.J. Stroud, the Marvin Harrison, and Andy Buka for real. Um, I feel like with that, they were the they were our best matchup to beat us. Because I feel like Michigan is a better team than Ohio State, but I feel like Georgia will have a better chance of beating Michigan than they would Ohio State because Ohio State literally has the kryptonite for Georgia. You know what I'm saying? I feel like Ohio State literally is built to beat Georgia. I feel like Michigan isn't. I feel like if we would have played Michigan, we would have beat them probably by double digits or something. 
even though Michigan is beat to beat is built to beat Ohio State. Ohio State is built to beat Georgia, and I think Georgia is just gonna dominate TCU. So shouts out to TCU because thank you for getting Michigan out of the way. I would prefer to play TCU over Michigan. I'm not gonna lie, as a Georgia Bulldog fan, with the way that we match up, and I agree. Somebody said earlier, I think they said that Georgia is basically gonna do the TCU with Alabama did to Kent State. I think it's gonna be like that too. I'm gonna get blown out. I'm glad they didn't call because they my second favorite team. And I'm happy. I love Cinderella story, so I'm happy TCU made it. Kids up here about to beat your RKB ball score. Are they cheating, Ma? There's no way they're about to beat my score. Legitimately. There's no way. There's no way. They're cheating. They got to be cheating. Again, I don't want to call Ohio State's kicker trash because he's actually a really good kicker, like a really good kicker. I think it's a mix of the moment was too big for him. And again, George is the new dynasty. I think Vegas made a call and told them you got to miss this kick. There'll be some money waiting for you in the locker room, like a million dollars. We need you to miss this kick. And again, this is coming from a Georgia Bulldog fan. I'm telling y'all, college football always has a team that they just feel like needs to win. It just feels like it's destined for them to win. The refs are going to make certain calls to make it happen. Vegas is going to make a call like, hey, y'all, we need this and this to happen so this team can win. Georgia's that team. I can admit that. As a Georgia Bulldog fan, I can admit that. We are that team right now. Because there's no way. In that same game, he had a 48-yarder right down the middle, plenty of leg, literally the perfect kick, like right down the middle of the goalpost. How did he miss a 50-yarder that bad? You know what I'm saying? So even as a Georgia Bulldog fan, I'm like, I don't know. I think Vegas made in a call. I think Vegas made a call. I'm actually really interested in seeing what Alabama's going to look like with, without uh, Bryce Young. I don't think they're going to fall off a cliff. But I'm really interested in seeing who's going to be the next guy up because I don't know. I haven't really paid attention to Alabama enough to know who's the next quarterback up. So who is the next quarterback that I need to be worried about? Because as a Georgia Bulldog fan, like I said, I prefer to play mid even as bad as Alabama's been this year. Alabama still just has something with Georgia to where, like, I'm still afraid of Alabama a little bit. I'm really happy that Alabama didn't make it to the college football playoffs because I was worried about that. I'm not going to lie. So I am definitely still like, uh, I don't think Alabama's going to be a cakewalk next year at all. But I'm genuinely curious, who's the next quarterback up for them? I haven't paid attention. Jalen Milrow is going to be their quarterback at Alabama. So what is he, a sophomore? Redshirt freshman? Who is he? I, I really honestly don't know. Mike Hilton? Jeffrey, I agree. Georgia did not play well. We definitely, Ohio State outplayed us for the majority of that game for sure. Like I said, if it was like basketball where you had to win a four game, four games out of a seven game series, I think Georgia wins that. I think we are the better team. But Ohio State came out and played better. They schemed better. better. Their offensive scheme was brilliant. Some of the best offensive play calls. I mean, literally every time we ran man coverage, they had something to beat that. When we ran zone coverage, they had something to beat that. We literally had, like, no answers for them most of the time. Jalen Carter wasn't the game changer that he normally is. Now, granted, he got held a couple of times that weren't called. But Jalen Carter wasn't as dominant as I expected him to be. I mean, Ohio State played their tails off. Players, coaches, everything. But at the end of the day... And that that last few that last eight minutes it got ugly. That last eight minutes it got ugly, man. I agree. The fact that Daniel Jones is doing what he's doing without really good receivers, Daniel Jones would give up an organ for Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson, and Curtis Samuel. And the fact that he's doing what he's doing goes to show that it is quarterback. I agree.
I agree, coaches, as well. Scott Turner's play calling is drastically inconsistent. Again, my point is I think Scott Turner is a great play designer. Terrible play caller. Now, he has moments of genius. Then he also has moments where it's like there's no way we hired him to be our offensive coordinator. Like, how did he how did he even get hired? Like, some of the play calls, like that fourth and one, where we, we gave it to Jonathan Williams on a sweep. Fourth and one, that's crazy. Take Brian Robinson off the field. That's a terrible decision. Aiden Hutchinson got three interceptions. Yeah, Ryan Day, man. If we can bring him to the Commanders with C.J. Stroud, we're Super Bowl contenders. I'm not going to lie. Because our defense, when healthy especially, is elite. Chase Young back. Wait till we get Cole Holcomb back. Wait till we get Cameron Curl and Benjamin St. Juice back. You know what I'm saying? And if we get Ryan Day as an offensive coordinator, even though he's not leaving Ohio State anytime soon, I don't think. And C.J. Stroud at quarterback, man, you got to, hey, man, do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. Brian Robinson does already have 64 yards on 18 carries. Well, just to let y'all know, Jonathan Allen has been downgraded to out. And what's his name? His name is Major Who? Hey, my Georgia Bulldog Tyson Campbell on the uh, Jaguars just got a um, just got a touchdown from a from a fumble. That makes me happy. Georgia Bulldog having another good day. So Aiden Hutchinson just got another interception. That's crazy. Wait, so wait, what's this guy's name? Major Who? Major Tutty? Like, is that like a nickname for touchdown? What, what are we talking about? Brian Robinson, first run. One yard loss. We'll see how it goes. Just to let y'all know again, Jonathan Allen is out for the rest of the game. Yeah, I already talked about Keely Ringo earlier, bro. He's literally Trevon Diggs with more athleticism, literally. Just like corner Javon Bullard couldn't hold a mecca. Ibuka. That's what I'm saying. That's why I don't think TCU has a chance because Ohio State has elite receivers. They're definitely wide receiver you at least for the past 10 years. It's been back to back to back to back to back. You can't forget Terry McCoy and Curtis Samuel on our current team are from Ohio State. You know what I'm saying? It's just been back to back to back. Like they it's ridiculous. Gil Wilson, Chris Olave, all the it's just it's unnecessary. Buddy's name, who I still can't pronounce. Um, <laughs> that's going to the draft that skipped out on the playoffs that was supposed to be the best receiver coming into the uh, the season, but then Marvin Harrison went stupid. I mean, they're wide receiver you right now. I can't lie. And what's going on? I know we need to run the ball, but golly, man. The Browns know we want to run the ball, so you got to throw it. You got to. You can't run the ball when the other team knows you want to run the ball because then how you, you know. There has to at least be a threat of pass right now. But yeah, Tutty is crazy. So, like, is Tutty, is Tutty, like, Nick is short for touchdown? Like, how people say get a Tutty? And again, just for those of y'all who may not have heard me, for the third time, Jonathan Allen is downgraded to out for the rest of this game. So, sadly, we will not have Jonathan Allen for the remainder of this game. Hopefully, he's healthy enough to play against the Cowboys next week. But then again, if the Cowboys are sitting there starters, maybe... Maybe we may rest them. Yeah, I know when we like say Tutty, we mean touchdown. But is that what the commanders mean when they say Tutty? Because Major Tutty, so they like combine military with the hog and call it a day. So now we got to see that pig with the the commander helmet. From now on, like we gotta, that's what we like. I mean, I don't love it, but I'm not a big mascot person anyway, so I don't really care about having a say or whatever. I don't like it, but it is what it is, man. I really don't care. It's not for me to like anyway. I don't necessarily love any mascot in the NFL, so it's not it's not something for me to like. I don't think they could have done anything that I would have loved unless it may have been like some type of wolf or something. 
Other than that, eh, I don't care. Brian Robinson's best runs with the QB on the center stop with the shotgun runs. I don't like it either. But I remember seeing some advanced statistic a couple of weeks ago that shotgun runs actually work out better than I formation and single back runs. But I, I'm with you. I'm right with you. I feel like Brian Robinson runs way better. I feel like he would run better with a fullback in the game as well. But uh, I don't know. Scott Turner doesn't like to do that. I don't know either. That's a good point, Tommy. Yeah, fans, either way, no matter what they would have picked, somebody would have been mad. That's just how all of these things go. Um, Mexicans was the best mascot. He doesn't look mean. Yeah, he doesn't. I would have I would have preferred if he at least looked mean. If the little pig thing would have looked mean. What's good, Epic, for real? What's good? B-Rob and Big Hat mascot, I, I would have been good with. Hey, that could have been a mascot, Brian Robinson with the big hat. I mean, at this point... We went through all of this. We're only going to have a mascot for two regular season games because, because the new owner may just change the whole name, team, logo, mascot, all of that. So, you know, it's like, I mean, we went through all of this to unveil the mascot. They waited to the last second to do it. We're only going to have a mascot for two regular season games. He about to change next year. They should... Hey, man, his face similar. Oh, like the Georgia Bulldogs, yeah. I would have liked it if the pig was more angry. Well, angrier, my fault. If the pig was angry, I would have liked it as well. I would love for us to be the Red Wolves. And yeah, I don't, we just ran. I don't know what these plays were that yeah, we just ran. I don't know what the offensive line was doing on third down. I don't know what any of that was. But shouts out to Carson Wentz for at least getting the ball out of his hand. But we ran it, ran it. And then the offensive line folded on third down, and it didn't matter. Now the Cleveland Browns have good field positioning. They're starting on our own 37, 38-yard line. That's not good, but we'll see. We'll see how this goes. Offensive line is Swiss cheese and pass pro. They're better in run blocking, but you can't block everybody when they expect you to run. But I agree. Pass protection, they're terrible. Run blocking, they're better. Man, between that long offensive drive that we had to end the quarter and the long and then halftime, this is our first time our defense is touching the field for real, for real, to actually like play real football in over an hour. It's kind of crazy when you think about it. Well, nearly an hour, almost an hour. Our defense hasn't played defense in nearly an hour because of that really long offensive drive and halftime combined. Yeah, Chase Young is balling, man. Who's our backup defensive tackle? I think Daniel Wise. Did Daniel Wise get demoted? <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me see. I think that somebody got demoted. Technically, John Ridgeway. Yeah, but I think there's somebody else. I mean, Casey Tuhill, maybe? Casey Tuhill is technically. Yeah, Daniel Wise got demoted a cut, right? Yeah. So I think David Bada. I think David Bada got moved up. But I know we have John Ridgeway. Maybe Casey Suhill could kind of, he plays edge rusher more so. But he could play some interior defensive lineman if you need him to. We'll see. The thing I'm worried about with not having Jonathan Allen is that he's our best pass rushing interior defensive lineman. Deron Payne has more sacks, but I would say Jonathan Allen is still our better pass rushing defensive lineman. But, and then when you take him out, it's Deron Payne and John Ridgeway. They're great at stopping the run, but I don't know about them necessarily getting into Sean Watson. Every week you fans talk bad about other people's teams. <laughs> I'm happy he's back, but Wentz needs to get his stuff together. And yeah, Herb, that's true, man. Defense has played very well, considering what the Browns starting offensive uh, field position in this been this game, man. It's it's been it hasn't been good, but hey, we're still up seven is three, and granted, Deshaun Watson seven yard pass. On first down, Jamin Davis and Jeremy Reeves there to make the tackle. It's second and three on Cleveland's 44-yard line. 
Yeah, Daniel Wise did get cut, I believe. I thought I was like, he either got cut or got sent to the practice squad. Either way, he's no longer with the team. So I think it's John Ridgeway, maybe Casey Tuhill, maybe David Bada as our backup interior defensive lineman. We'll see. But second and three for the Cleveland Browns. Come on, defense. What's going on? Appreciate that update. You say he's going to be added to waivers. He's going to be added to the practice squad if he clears waivers. Appreciate that. Appreciate the update, my boy Jay Young. My boy Chase Young making plays, man. My boy Chase Young making plays. And there go John Ridgeway for you. All right, defense, get off the field on third down right here. Get the ball back to the offense. You see that trailer? for 80 for Brady who wanted that no I did not see it I've been so stuck into the chat and replying to y'all I didn't even see what happened uh we gave up the first down all right come on defense Ben but don't break stop them right now before they get in the field goal range brown parachute in for a touchdown hopefully we clinch today that would be lovely but I doubt it because I think the Lions are gonna win even if we beat the Browns the Lions win we don't clinch today we still got to beat the Cowboys but regardless of what the Brown, what the Lions do, what the Seahawks do, what the Packers do, it doesn't matter. If we beat the Browns and the Cowboys, we're in the playoffs, and it's that simple. So all you got to do is win, man. All you got to do is win like today and win next week. And yeah, Jamin Davis got to be better there, man. Yeah, Jamin... Good read by Jamin Davis, but you got to you gotta make that tackle there. And, yeah, Chase Young is playing with a different level of energy. I'm seeing people on Twitter saying that, like, him being on the field is different in the stadium. Like, he's hyping up the crowd every chance he gets. It's a different energy when Chase Young's on the field. Detroit here. Let's go Cleveland. Okay, we got Detroit in the building. I love Detroit music, especially my All-Star JR is probably my favorite. But I like Risk Taker, uh, D-Boy, and Smoke Camp Chino as well. That was almost an interception, though. Third and five, let's get off the D let's get off the field. Defense, third and five. Come on, do not let them convert. Do not let them convert. <laughs> Timothy, that's the that's the Carson Wentz you love. If we win, we have to hope the Eagles win today as well. We hope the Lions lose next week. Let's go Browns. Cowboys going to be really tough. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. Even if the Cowboys do sit their starters, I'm not entirely too confident in us winning that game. I'm not going to lie. Cowboys easy if you put Cowboys, uh, if you put the QB's girlfriends in the stands. Oh, good point. Good point. Good point. Oh wow! Well, Amari Cooper, Amari Cooper hitting us, um, hurting us even when he let, even after he leaves the NFC East. Cooper, the boy Amari Cooper still killing us, man. That's unacceptable right there. Kendall Fuller, you got to be way better than that. That is completely unacceptable. That man couldn't have fully need to be ashamed of himself. I can't believe we just allowed a third and five turn into a touchdown. Like when when we have third and five, I'm like, oh no. I don't know what we about to do. I'm worried about the, the getting the first down on offense. The other teams out here getting touchdowns on third and five. Must be nice, huh? Yeah, it must be nice. Must be nice. Good play call. Great move by Amari Cooper. I can't even be mad. Good throw by Deshaun Watson. Missed tackle by Jamin Davis. Leads to a Browns first down. Three plays later. Missed tackle by Kendall Fuller. Leads to a Browns touchdown. Missed tackles, man. Missed tackles. That's how serious it can get. If Jamin Davis didn't miss that tackle on Nick Chubb, I believe it was on third and two, we wouldn't even be here. 
And then Kendall Fuller missing the tackle right there. It would have been a first down, but it wouldn't have been a touchdown if Kendall Fuller makes that tackle. So, missed tackles, man. My boy Amara with the donation, appreciate that. Said Rico, we ain't going nowhere, bro. <laughs> hey man, we gotta believe, man. Appreciate the donation, though. Of course, man. Again, if you're in the stream, if you haven't left the, if you haven't um left the like yet, please leave a like. It just goes to show every time we play a game and Cameron Curl is not playing, our defense allows big plays. Cameron Curl is the reason we don't allow big plays. Every game that he hasn't played in, big plays. Teams score more points on us than they have all season. Every game. Cameron Curl, man, you could argue Jonathan Allen, maybe Chase Young, maybe the best players on the defense, best players. But if we're talking about the most important, it's Cameron Curl. There's an obvious difference in when Cameron Curl's on the field, way more dramatic of a difference than anybody else, period. Like I said, you can argue Jonathan Allen, maybe Chase Young, maybe some of these other guys on our defense are the best players on defense, but the most important is Cameron Curl because we don't have a guy that can even kind of replace Cameron Curl. Cameron Curl's impact on his defense, you can't duplicate it, you can't replicate it. We can't just sub in a guy to do that. I love what I see from Derek Forrest, but he can't do what Cameron Curl does, and it's obvious. And like as far as Jonathan Allen being hurt, now granny, you prefer to have Jonathan Allen on the field and, you know, John Ridgeway isn't Jonathan Allen, but it doesn't. But not having Jonathan Allen on the field doesn't automatically mean 80 yard touchdowns for the other team. And Jared Patterson's getting some pretty decent uh, kickoff returns done, man. I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. You kidding, the fuller? We can't have that though, man. You gotta get. You gotta do better than that. I agree. We do need to get Terry the ball, but don't force it to him because Carson Wentz, his first interception was to Terry. But at the same time, it just seems like whenever Carson wins as the quarterback, Terry just doesn't get the ball. And I believe he should. But at least right there, 11 yard throw to Terry McLaurin. I will take it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And Curl slides into the box seamlessly, too. As we, yep. He, he makes it so we don't allow big plays and he stops the run. Cameron Curl is huge for this defense. Carson Wentz at 60 yards pass. <laughs> That's what y'all like, right? That's what y'all like? Terry McLaurin with his first catch in the third quarter. I hate that, but I guess I'll take it. I guess I'll take it. And right, then we tried to target Terry McLaurin after that. It didn't work. Bruh, Herb, man, appreciate that, man. Make sure y'all do not forget the like of the stream while y'all in here, man. We got about 350 people in here. Only 100 and something likes. Leave a like on the stream if you haven't already. I really appreciate it. Really, really appreciate it. Come on, Commanders. It's time to get that lead back, man. This is that time to get the lead back. We need this for the playoffs, man. Need this for the playoffs. Okay, Brian Robinson. Yes, sir. Brian Robinson, man, leave it in his hands. That man's going to make plays. He's going for a hundred of them. Brian Robinson going for a hundred of them. Brian Robinson going for a hundred of them. Already has 78. Still got the majority of the third quarter to go. My boy Brian Robinson going for a hundred of them. A hundred. We need a tutty. We need a major tutty, according to the commanders. Uh, that's so ugly, man. I can't believe I even said that. Ugly, <laughs> ugly. Why is our why is our mascot Major Tutty? I'm not telling the party chat lyric. I ain't gonna lie. 
I'm not telling the party chat that one. We already gave them commanders to laugh at. I ain't telling them our mascot name. If they don't ask, I won't tell. They're going to have to do their own research. I ain't even about to have that conversation with folks. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, though. That drop, that drop actually probably benefited us a little bit. I'm not going to lie. How many failed screens have we run so far? They must get a kick out of making us the laughing stock of the league. Cleveland just doesn't know what we're doing because Scott doesn't want to open the playbook. Only Tutty we be seeing. <laughs> it's so sad. It's so sad. We should have never got Winston Heineke. Mascot sounds like something from one of my movies. Without a passing game, we are done. You got to have both in the NFL. You can't only run the ball. You got to be able to pass the ball. And then Carson went sacked by Miles Garrett. Now it's time to punt. Well, no points that drive, y'all. No points that drive. I mean, if the Cowboys don't rest their starters, we have three weeks in a row of the the, the league's leading sack, the, the, the league sack leader, and Nick Bosa, then Miles Garrett, and then Michael Parsons. Like, that's insane. That is an insane, like, ensemble of edge rushers in a row. Like, that's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. I'm hearing from Twitter that somebody was wide open, too. That's what sucks about that sack right there. The offensive line folded because somebody was wide open. I believe we need to do a threat quarterback as well, even though I can't necessarily blame Carson Wentz for that one. I've already given up on that Lions-Bears game. I've already just assumed the Lions and Bears got that one. Some people on Twitter are blaming Jahan Dotson for that drive, for that drop he had. But then again, it looked like he was going to get popped anyway. So I don't know, man. I do not know. And yeah, Sam Howell is not active, so... No matter what happens with Winston Heineke, we can't go to Sam Howell. You have to hide him under another jersey and hope that nobody notices or something. Bro, Jack, I'm right with you, bro. This game is boring. If you're not a Commanders or Browns fan, this game sucks. We have a reason to watch this because we're Commanders and Browns fans in here, but... There's no other reason to be in here. There's no other reason. This game, this game is not it. This game is terrible. It only makes it worse that we just saw TCU, Michigan, and Georgia, Ohio State. We go from that to this is just. It's, this game is literally making me sleepy. I'm not gonna lie. This game is ugh. Wait, it said Keely Ringo versus Marvin Harrison Jr. last night with six targets, one catch with 16 yards, one touchdown allowed, and one forced fumble. That can't be right. Is that true? Because I saw him getting cooked. As a Georgia Bulldog fan, I can admit, saw him getting cooked. Now, he had some plays where he locked up, uh, did a good job of staying with Marvin Harrison. I'm not even going to say locked up. He did a really good job of staying with Marvin Harrison Jr. And C.J. Shroud didn't even throw it their way. Um, but... For the most part, Keely Ringo was getting cooked. And again, that's coming from a commander's, I mean, a Georgia Bulldog fan. Wait, see, I promise you ain't missed nothing. This game is boring. If we weren't commanders or Browns fans, we would not be here.
He said, let's make this game interesting. Throw us some bones like Brody and Aja are having fun with. <laughs> this game is XFL quality. I agree. The game is boring. Rigo, you sound like you're losing faith. No, I still feel like we should be able to win this game. It's just boring. It's just no matter who wins. Even if we win, this game sucks. This <laughs> game going from... Going from watching my Georgia Bulldogs pull a miracle against Ohio State to this is just what are we doing? You know what I'm saying? Why are we here? This game is literally making me sleepy. Oh, Lord. Bleacher Report just sent a notification about the commander's new mascot. Oh, I hope this doesn't get to the party chat, man. Please. Thank you for the, for the Brody gifs, Rich. Thank you. Rich and Lyric, I'm going to need y'all to do whatever y'all can to stop the party chat from learning about our new mascot. Especially the name of them. Bro, Rich, it's bad, bro. It's bad. It's a real bad situation, man. Uh, Lyric said it's over with. How? What happened? Somebody watching the stream? Man. I just, I don't even feel like talking about it. I ain't even going to deal with it. I ain't going to lie. Anybody in the party should ask me about Major Tutty. I'll just take that up with the manager. He said, nah, because I'm telling. Why? I'm not explaining nothing. I'm not explaining nothing to the party chat. I ain't got nothing for you. I'm going to be like, I don't know what y'all talking about because I do not know. Yeah, Jonathan, Jonathan Allen's out for the rest of the game. He's banged up. Yeah, they're, they're running the ball like it's nothing right now, man. I mean, they're making it just seem like it's nothing. Come on, defense. We need something, right? We need something. It just seems like our defense always has one drive like this every game where they just can't stop a, a nut, can't stop not near thing. You just run the ball all you want. Why did Nick Chubb fall like that? What was that on the other play? What was that? All right, man, defense, we need this, man. We need this 39. Get off the field, please. Please get off the field. Bro, I'm telling you, wet, to wet toilet paper defense, bro. We, man, shout out to Montez Sweat for that play, though. We need, we need to get off the field on this third down, though. Thank you, Montez Sweat, but we need, we need more. We need more from everybody right now. Get off the field on third and nine, please. And not in the way that I, that, that happened last time. Don't, don't take that as touchdown. Like, oh, you said get off the field. You didn't say how. No, get off the field with no points allowed. Get the ball back to our offense. Ten to seven. Let's go score. That's what I mean. Let me be specific this time. Because last time I said get off the field, we gave up a touchdown. They were like, you said get off the field. You said you said get off the field. That's all you specify. Get off the field. Yeah, yeah that's apparently what they said. And we gave it to them. We gave it to them. That's what we did. Just made it that easy. You would think that we would cover Amari Cooper out of anybody, right? You would think out of anybody we would cover Amari Cooper, right? The guy that just killed us for a touchdown on third and five. Now third and nine, we just let him go crazy. Like we just, we just, it's that easy. It's literally just that easy.
He said, I need energy drinks and a sponsor. <laughs> Speaking into existence, man, they need to get off this field, man, in a good way. We're getting our draft position up for Shroud or Porter. Okay. Why was it Derek Forrest and Jeremy Reeves on Amari Cooper? Like, what type of zone coverage was that where there was no corner involved? All right, we'll take Kareem Hutt negative four yards with David Mayo. Thank you. We'll take that. But we, I mean, what's going on? They're still in, uh, that's always funny when I hear lean with it, rock with it in stadiums. Like, why, why is that song played outside of Atlanta? That's such a random song. And it's not even like a football song. Like, they're not talking about football. They're not talking about sports. Literally just lean with it, rock with it. I still don't even understand why a swag surf gets played outside of Atlanta. Nuck if you buck. I, I don't understand Nuck if you buck either outside of Atlanta. I understand some songs because they have like slight sports references. But those three songs literally have nothing to do with sports. Nothing. I'm always surprised when I hear those songs played outside of Atlanta. Especially like in a stadium setting. They got to bleep out all the words. Most of the time they just play the beat. Okay. Second and 19. Maybe at the edge of field goal range. Maybe we can escape without giving up points. But defense got to clamp up. Can't allow any yards. Any yards. Wipe me down your favorite song, though. Now, wipe me down is hard, though. That's Louisiana, though. But that's hard. Louisiana, wipe me down is a classic. He said Swag Surf was a national anthem. <laughs> I just... It's so weird. Oh, my Lord. Kendall Fuller. What is going on? What is going on today, Kendall Fuller? What's going on? I don't know what's going on at all. I heard a little baby. I heard a little baby in the stadium right before that play, too. I don't know what's going on. I feel like a Falcons game. Or maybe this is just how it always is, and I just don't notice what stadium music sounds like. They really just be playing this much Atlanta music for no reason? Like, for absolutely no reason? All right, I guess at this, po at this point, best case scenario, we get all only allowing three points. We just got to be better, though. Like, I'm not understanding why Kevin Fuller was that far away. Second and nine. What are you watching here? I'm watching, I'm watching it through Fox, and I just hear the background music. I just heard lean with it, rock with it. And then I heard a little baby playing. I don't know what's going on. Maybe that's just how all stadiums are, I guess. I don't know. I don't go to games live. The only time I do is when I go to, like, I went to the Falcons Commanders game. Or I may go to, like, a Hawks game. And so I just expect to hear Atlanta music like Swag Surf and Laffy Taffy and Nuck If You Buck and Lean With It Rock. I just expect to hear that. And Lil Baby and Gun All of Them. But it's just, I, it catches me off guard when I hear it other places. All right, come on now. Come on, defense. Thank you, Danny Johnson. Thank you, Danny Johnson. Let's get off the field. Only allow a field goal. Danny Johnson has made some good plays today. He's definitely playing better than Kendall Fuller has played. Definitely playing better than Kendall Fuller has played. My boy Jaden with another donation. Commander's new mascot name is the Hoggets. I think that's the cheerleading squad or something like that, I think. Appreciate the donation again. My boy Jaden L, man. You turn on Swag Surf or Nugget, Nugget if you bucket any part, it's finna go up. <laughs> yeah, that was a really fun era of Atlanta. That was like middle school, early high school. That was really fun. That time period was really fun. Crank that Soldier Boy, all of that. But nah, what's really going on in this game, though? We really, like, forget the playoffs. We said we don't want to go to the playoffs. Y'all like y'all do know the Browns have no chance of making the playoffs no matter what they do. They literally have nothing to gain. So what is going on exactly? What is going on right now to where we're the only team on the field right now that has something to play for and we're losing 17 to 7 at home. Too don't forget that. This is at home. While we're honoring the hogs and everything. This is terrible. This is really bad. That's what happens when he plays on defense. Well, time to throw. At least we'll see how next week. He said, I'm a holler. We're going about to roll up. Hey, man, I ain't mad at you, man. It's just 
Like I said, this game. Like I said, if I wasn't a Commanders or a Browns fan, I would not be watching this game. This game sucks. It's boring. Even if we end up winning, this game is boring. Jayon there. Jayon done talked a little bit. He's, he, done, he done said a few things. He ain't said nothing about being in the kitchen, though. Said, stop saying off the field. You're jinxing us every time you say that. <laughs> no, no Jonathan Allen. No Cameron Curl. No St. Juice. It's struggle, man. It's a struggle. Plain and simple. game is quite bad this game is quite all i know is jalen carter all i know is jalen carter better step up big against tcu because i don't know where he was against ohio state all, right. all i know is jalen carter better go ball out against tcu i'm ex i want to win by 20 plus points i want to i want about a third quarter already know the game over type thing that's the type of championship I want. After the way that my stomach felt with that Ohio State game, I'm good on that. I need my Georgia Bulldogs to go ahead and handle business early. Handle business real early. Who we picking with the 15th pick? He said Rico ain't even trying to talk about. Bro, this game is boring, bro. I ain't even going to. Y'all know I'm going to keep it a thou wild with y'all, man. This game is boring. If I wasn't a Commanders fan, I would not be watching this game. I would be on red zone right now. I ain't going to lie. It just sucks because injuries are killing us. I mean, now, granted, we're not playing well. That's big, too. But injuries are killing us, man. No Jonathan Allen, no Cole Holcomb, no Benjamin St. Juice, and no Cameron Curl are huge. Those are four starters, four impact starters. That's your arguably your best defensive lineman, arguably your best defensive player. That's arguably, I mean, your best linebacker, at the very least, your best run-stopping linebacker. That's definitely your best corner, and that's definitely your best safety. And we don't have any of those guys, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, we're not playing well. There's no excuses for Jack DeRio or any of these guys. The injuries also really hurt. And then our offense on the other side, there's, I can't even provide a reason or excuse. Scott Turner, Carson Wentz, offensive line. Like it's typically been all season for the most part. It's been quarterback, offensive line, and play calling. Uh, three three major problems for our team. We need to fix at least two of those three things, please. Let's get it though, man. 36 seconds left. There's every injuries coach and play calling. Maybe next year it gets old. Yeah, true. Very true. I feel like our defense got way better. We got closer. I feel like we have great offensive weapons. I feel like our receiving core is elite. I feel like it's one of the best in the NFL. But it doesn't matter if the offensive line can't block for the quarterback. It doesn't matter if the offensive coordinator doesn't call the right plays. And it doesn't matter if we don't have a good enough quarterback for it, for it to matter. I, I want to draft the guy. Please. Please. Please draft somebody. If it ain't Sam Howell, which it doesn't seem like they believe it is, it's just like draft somebody. Where's your Wentz love? Like, I've been wanting Sam Howell since Carson Wentz got hurt. My problem, my, I haven't necessarily been saying go Carson Wentz. I've been saying stop with Taylor Heineke. I want to see Sam Howell out there. I, w I mainly want to see Sam Howell so I can know what we have in him and then draft a guy. Because I really, I really do not... I really do not um I don't want to go into this draft and then we say don't draft a quarterback because we still have Sam Howell and we don't know. Well, can we please find out? Can we please find out? Yeah, Eric Flowers still being in the streets is crazy. I don't know why Eric. Maybe Eric Flowers just doesn't want to come play for us because I don't know why we haven't made that call if we haven't. If we haven't. And why are we not snapping the ball before the end of the quarter? We're the one down 10. Why do we not call another play?
Appreciate that, Herb. Yeah, make sure y'all leave a like on the stream if you can. Appreciate that, Herb. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, B Finesse. Thank you, thank you, everybody. Please leave a like on the stream if you haven't. Really appreciate it. But yeah, I just, this how I've wanted to start how since Carson Wentz got hurt. Because I wanted to give him enough games to where we could be like, okay, he's not it. Let's draft the quarterback. All I know is if Sam Howell doesn't start a single game this season, do not let that stop you from getting Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, Anthony Richardson, any of these guys. If that's what you planned on doing originally, don't let Sam Howell stop you. At the end of the day, Sam Howell has a lot of talent, but um, but he's still a fifth round pick. It's not like you're throwing away a very valuable pick. And we traded back to get the pick. We didn't even originally have the pick. Do not let Sam Howell start. I mean, do not let Sam Howell um, stop you from getting um, a quarterback. But obviously, we need a quarterback. I know we need offensive line real bad, but if Sam Howell isn't the answer, Carson Wentz and Taylor Heineke on are, are, um, obviously aren't as well. I don't trust Scott with our new QB. I mean, my thing is, I would prefer Scott Turner with Pat Mahomes than Taylor Heineke or Carson Wentz with Andy Reid. You know what I'm saying? I feel like quarterback is more important. But I agree. We can definitely upgrade, get an upgrade over Scott Turner. I agree. I I definitely agree. Scott Turner is not it. But I feel like if we had Pat Mahomes, we wouldn't care. But, I mean, I would prefer Pat Mahomes and Scott Turner over... Um, over uh Andy Reid and Taylor Heineke or Pat or um or Carson Wentz, any of these guys. Oh, and that was a college freshman when Swag Surf came out. It's been a classic and every party I've been to played it every day in my freshman year at college. That's what me and my roommates day. <laughs> I mean, that's really how Atlanta took over. Atlanta just took over parties and clubs and and it was just up since then. Ever since the lean with it, rock with it, and Laffy Taffy and Swag Surf and Crank that soldier boy. It just party music just dominated. Wake up song when you wake <laughs> wake and bake. We go Ron gets seven wins again. Is he done? I doubt it. I doubt it. I think they're gonna place a lot of blame on Dan Snyder. Like Dan Snyder is the reason why we're losing games and things like that. Ron Rivera is gonna get another chance. Alright, we're moving the ball. Rico, do the Soldier Boy for us. Keep us awake. <laughs> nah, I'm, I don't even remember it. I just remember the, this part and then that. But I don't remember, like, everything in between. It was like a... I don't even remember. I used to do it all the time, though. I did all the... I don't know, because y'all not from Atlanta, so I don't know if y'all know about Crank That Batman. Crank That... Uh, crank, it was a bunch of stuff. It was a bunch of Crank That's. Um, shouts out to uh, Carson Wentz for that Terry McLaurin dot right there, though. I will take that. I will gladly take that. We moving the ball. We moving the ball. We are moving the ball. And then Carson Wentz scrambles for three yards to kind of ruin the momentum a little bit, but I'll take it. I'll take positive three yards over nothing, so I'll take that. Carson Wentz looks so slow, though. <laughs> crank that, bro. We had every crank that. It was Spider-Man, Batman. It was anything you could think of. Crank that everything. We had the Poon Palace. It was everything. We had the It's Going Down with Young Jock going on at the same time. It was just a whole bunch of stuff going on all at once. It was really fun, though. i tell you that. Yeah, Superman, all that. <laughs> Twerk team. Yeah, that. it was a lot going on all at once. Within like a three-year range, there was a lot going on in Atlanta. Carson Wentz to Curtis Samuel for six yards. I will take it. Five, six yards, third and one. Hey, I know throwing the ball is work, but you might want to go ahead and run that with Brian Robinson. I ain't going to lie. But I do believe we need a touchdown here. Please get a touchdown. Please, please, please touchdown here. Now, I can see that if you want to sacrifice next year, how is your quarterback? You give him a full year to start. That was a great move by Curtis Samuel, though. And great run by Brian Robinson for the first down. Way to pick up the first down. We're almost in the red zone. But I can see it like, okay, you let Sam Howell start. 
And then and then you go for Caleb Williams the next draft? <laughs> like, we go for Caleb Williams in the 2024 draft. You let Howell start 2023? Is that the plan? Is, is that the plan? Brian Robinson almost won, only one yard game. My boy Red Boy with the two do, two dollar donation. Appreciate that, man. Big time. All Wentz needs O line. He's good when he has time. Appreciate that big time, man. Thank you for the donation. Like I've said, Taylor Heineke is is a better option with the bad O line. Carson Wentz is a better option with the good O line. But right now with the offensive line not playing too well, and Carson Wentz isn't playing well either like that, but. I think Carson Wentz is the better quarterback in a clean pocket, but how often do we get a clean pocket? And I've been hearing a lot about Drake May, but I haven't gotten the chance to really watch him yet. I've been hearing a lot about him. Hearing a lot of people that say that he's better than Caleb Williams, which is crazy because, I mean, so far from what I've seen, Caleb Williams is the most Pat Mahomes-looking quarterback I've seen since Pat Mahomes. So, you know, I if, if Drake May's better than that, I got to start watching him for real. Caleb better, but Drake May's tough. I mean, the fact that there's even a debate out there has me excited. So is it like Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields again? Like, type of thing? Is it that good? Of course, we have a little short pass. It's either a screen... Or a short pass to a running back or somebody like a tight end on third and long, third and medium all the time. All the time. But hey, 17 to 10, I would have loved the touchdown there. But take the field goal, I guess. It's 10 to 17. We'll see. You should do a video on watching both of them this week. I, I do need to really start watching those guys for though. Drake May and Caleb Williams, I've been slipping. I've been slipping. I do need to get up on that for sure. All right, but, I mean, 43-yard field goal, good. 17-10. to 10. Let's see how this game goes. See if the defense can step up and the offense can continue to do what they just did and, and ball out. Quinn Hughes is good, too. Okay. You say you call and pick? Okay, I feel that. I hope. I hope so. I hope so. To come on, Redskins win so the whole division can get into the playoffs. That would be really cool. Oh, and potentially Spencer Rattler and DJ Ugal. So they could either be Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields or they could be Spencer Rattler and DJ U. Okay. I can see that. I can see that. Because, hey, man, I kept trying to warn y'all before this season started. Spencer Rattler. I tried. I was warning people left and right. I was warning people left and right about Spencer Rattler, man. Was that last year or this year? I can't even remember. I just remember being like, bro, I do not see the hype. I don't know what's going on. Maybe I'm tripping. I kept saying that. Now, DJU, I didn't watch him enough to have an opinion. I thought he would be good. I don't know why he didn't work out. But I kept saying Spencer Rattler. I was like, I don't know, man. Y'all, I don't know. Oh, yeah, that was last year because I was Matt Corral, Malik Willis, and all of those guys, Sam Howell, I was looking at I was looking at Spencer Rattler like, I don't know, man. I don't really see what y'all see. Is Sean Payton on the phone yet? I mean, it looks like we got to give up a first-round pick to get Sean Payton, which is crazy in itself. Yeah, we need a pick six real bad right now. Kendall Fuller, get us another one of them. Remember, Corn Elder got hurt on that uh, Hail Mary against the Falcons last year. Not this year, but the one I went to in Atlanta. It was the Hail Mary last play of the game. Corn Elder, I think, got hurt on that play towards ACL was out for the season. And then he just hasn't been back with the team since. But I've always won. I thought the same thing during training camp. I was like, where's Corn Elder? He looked pretty good. That wasn't Corn Elder. Who was that? Am I tripping? Who was that? Am I getting them mixed up? Oh, that was Tory McTire. My fault. My fault. Tory McTire. Okay, okay. Never mind. Got them mixed up. That's who I wanted in training camp. I was like, what happened to him in training camp? Tor Corn Elder was the one that was here for training camp but was getting cooked. I think it was he was the one that was getting cooked. Tory McTire was the one that got hurt against the Falcons and I wanted to bring back because he looked really good. Thank y'all. I appreciate it. I got them mixed up. That's my fault. All right, come on, defense. 
Come on, defense. Second and 10 after a Deshaun Watson incompletion. I will take it. Yeah, Montez Sweat is a, is a freak athlete, man. I mean, that's what Georgia does, bro. That's the state of Georgia makes, man. That's what we do. Great play by Montez Sweat. I agree. Uh-oh, Teddy Bridgewater's going to the medical tent. So now they got Skylar Thompson as the quarterback for uh for the Dolphins. And yeah, I don't We let Deshaun Watson do that, man. We forgot Deshaun Watson can run. You should go ahead and watch Drake May film. This game is boring. Do it now on stream. <laughs> nah, I can't I can't do anything that would get copyrighted on stream. I can see another sponsor, Rico, my pillow. <laughs> now this game's awful, bro. I'm gonna keep it a thou while with y'all, bro. This this game is awful. This is this is stupid. Come on, defense, man. Can't believe we allowed Deshaun Watson to do that. Deshaun Watson isn't even that fast, man. That man was running in slow motion and we let him do that. All right, only a one yard run from Nick Chubb. So they did they got that and they tried to see, all right, let's test him and let with the run again. Let's test them with the run again, see if they can stop it. We stopped it. Let's see what we do on second and nine. Can you just delete the live stream later? I don't know what it would do to my current donation stuff. I don't know. I'm scared. Like I said, I was streaming on my gaming channel. live stream stuff before on YouTube, like, banned me for, like, a month and stuff. So I'm scared to even try anything. Now, if there's, like, all 22 footage y'all can get, I'll do that. But, like, redder, but like regular... Regular um regular footage like a real game from like the regular broadcast angle that we watch. Um, I'm scared to do that I'm scared to like watch a highlight tape or anything like that But if somebody has a link to some all 22 footage, I will definitely do that. I Will definitely do some all 22 footage of those quarterbacks. We can do that right now cuz yeah, this game does suck I'm not gonna lie I don't even know what's going on right now, man. Too many men on the field? Like, how do we do that? How do you do that? Well, it's third and three. Third and three. Defense can still get a stop here, man. Daniel Jones having a good day. 19 to 24, 177 yards, two touchdowns. I wish we had that. What's going on now, man? What is going on now? What's going on with F.A. Obata, man? F.A. Obata, okay? So we got him. Did we get him? Fourth and one. Just go ahead and punt it, bro. Don't even go for it, bro. Don't even go for it, bro. It's not even that serious. No, don't go for it, bro. Good play by Casey Tuhill, but no, don't go for it, man. Brissett on the field? What's going on? Daniel Jones is 91 yards rushing, too. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. Giants are having fun, and we're out struggling. And they got the first down. Lord have mercy. Other teams make offense look so easy. Why do why do we make offense look so difficult? Why do we make offense look so difficult if other teams make it look so easy? Oh, yeah, Dan Daniel Jones is the ultimate fantasy quarterback right now. Five-man front, and we give up eight yards. That is ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. I 
Are they chanting we sub? Someone needs to be fired today. Just pick someone, Ron. <laughs> just anybody. Just pick someone. So Heineke does so. He said oh, Heineke was, does. Oh yeah. It's Heineke and Carson Wentz. We need a new quarterback, period. My stance has always been we need to draft somebody or give Sam Howell a chance. I mean, it's just missed tackles. I don't know what's going on. It's just a lot of missed tackles, man. And I don't think our defense is overrated. It's just we're missing our best defensive lineman in Jonathan Allen. We're missing our best secondary player, arguably, in Cameron Curl. Our best corner in Benjamin St. Juice. And arguably our best linebacker in Cole Holcomb. I'm surprised our defense has played as well as it has. I feel like it's honestly exceeded expectations to an extent with all of the guys we're missing. I mean, it's not even necessarily excuses. It's really just facts. Like, I mean, Jonathan Allen is, an, is about to be an all-pro, at the very least, pro bowler. Like, you know, it's like, what can you really do when you're missing literally your best players? No team should be able to win by without having their best players. But, yeah, this is looking ugly, man. This is looking real ugly. He said, blow the team up. He said, got you. Appreciate it. You don't get free agents to come here playing like this. Amari Cooper's having the time of his life right now. I ain't going to lie. Man is having the game of his life. Even though Amari Cooper got traded out of the NFC East, he still found a way to get two touchdowns on this, and that's a shame. That man, Amari Cooper, is in the AFC North and is still giving us two touchdowns in one season. That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. It's five minutes left, and we need 14 points just to tie. Well, it sounds like, hey, silver, silver lining, glass half full, optimism. More than likely, we'll see Sam Howell next week as our starting quarterback. That sounds fun. What's good, Jazz T? Welcome back, man. What's good, man? What's happening with you? Happy New Year. Yes, sir. We know Terry's going to demand a trade. He said TCU would beat us. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, I mean, at the very least, the silver lining is we'll get to see some Sam Howell next week. Looks like Sam Howell next week, man. He said Vanderbilt would beat us. <laughs> Ball game. Ron is too much of a bummer to put Howland. No, nah, I think he'll put Howland. I saw G Justina Anderson report that there's a chance that Howell could play against the Cowboys, whether, we, whether we're in the playoffs or if we're out of it. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. We'll see. But, I mean, I've been team start Howell since Carson Wentz got hurt. So, I've been team Sam Howell since Carson Wentz was playing like trash against Tennessee and stuff like that. So, I've been wanting to see Sam Howell the same this whole time, so I really hope we see him. I really hope we at least get one game with him. And, hey, man, I mean, I'm not sure if I fully subscribe to the idea of starting Howell the whole year next year and just completely sacrificing the year and going for Caleb Wilson or Drake May the year afterwards, but that doesn't sound like a bad plan at this point, especially. It sound better than anything we got going on. And that man, oh, that man Lyric after that touchdown started up his stream on, on Xbox. That man is on. <laughs> that man Lyric said, forget this, man. I'm done with y'all, man. There's no way we finish the season on this much of a losing streak, a tie and a losing streak. But we came out, we came out of that bye week stale. We came out of that bye week awful. That bye week was the worst thing ever for us. He said, hey, Rico, so when we get the next mock draft, what's good, King Sean? Uh, I don't know, man. Maybe tomorrow at this point. 
I think I think it is about time to start looking at some mock drafts. I may do like a whole free agency thing too. Who we need to sign in free agency, all that type of stuff. So let me write that down. Let me write that down. Why you ain't been on the game? I just been busy. Rico, we can we make a mock draft video tomorrow. Okay, okay, okay. Y'all need quarterback, O line, cornerback, and some uh, better play calling too. Throw that in there too. Throw some better play calling right in there. Wait, Mike Evans hasn't scored a touchdown since week four? Wow. I mean, I know he's been hurt a couple of games, but still. He hasn't been hurt that much. All right, third and four, man. Offense and QB. Offensive coordinator. Linebacker and corner is still our need, too. But offensive line and quarterback are definitely more urgent, for sure, in my opinion. We have a lot of injury. I, I just remember that we don't even have Antonio Gibson in this game, too. Yeah, Jahan does have to catch that. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if he had fried chicken before the game started because Jahan Dotson normally has the best hands, and now he's just folding. I don't know what's going on. Mark Johnson, basically. Basically. You think we trading to get a second first? I would love to. I would love to, but... And that was a bad throw by Carson Wentz, but you would still hope Jahan Dotson makes that catch. All right, well, six yards, six yards for a first down. All right, let's see. We got less than five minutes left to do something. Yeah, ARW1, I may have to do something like that. He said that ball was on the ground. Don't do that. That's what I'm saying. Now, Carson Wentz is definitely more to blame than Jahan Dotson, but you still hope Jahan Dotson catches that. Definitely still prefer if Jahan Dotson catches that. Are right, you good play call kind of on third and four? I mean, they're giving us whatever we want underneath. So, And then Carson Wentz sacked, so I don't know what's going on with that. Time still going. Time still going. Keely Ringo and QB in this draft. It's not looking too good right now, y'all. It's not looking too good. It's too late to tank now. Should have tanked after Carson Wentz got hurt against the Brown, uh, the Bears. It's way too late to take now. If you were going to tank, that was the time. Now, I mean, I think the highest pick we're going to get is like 15 anyway. Just to let y'all know, remember the Eagles have the Saints pick. So the Eagles are going to pick before us this draft, which is crazy. The Eagles get the pick before us in this upcoming draft. That is insane when you think about it. I got you, mommy. I got you. I mean, fourth and three, we got to do something. What's good, Volcano? What's good? What's good, man? Welcome to the stream. Again, if you haven't liked up the stream, make sure you leave a like. It's free for y'all, and it means the world to me. Only got about like 200-something likes. We got about almost 400 people in here. Make sure you like up the stream. Got white aggro. Rico can't keep watching. Sent you a tip. Appreciate that, Key. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Hey, I'll take it, Cam Sims. The great said, thank you, Ma. Hi, y'all. Hi, the greats. Hi to the little greats upstairs. Hey, man, I'll take it, Cam Sims. Thank you. I'll take that throw, and I'll take that catch. Look at Cam Sims coming into the clutch. Look at Cam Sims making a play. Look at Cam Sims making a play. Ooh, interception. All right. All right. Three interceptions. Sam Howell next week. Sam Howell next week. Oh, we right. Sam Howell next week. Oh, right. Oh, right. Sam Howell. Yes, sir. 
file. Whoa. Sam Howe. Yes, sir. Play under review, though. Sam Howe. Sam Howe. Yes, sir. Yeah, I agree. You might as well go ahead and throw Sam Howell out there after this drive. You might as well just go ahead and throw my boy Sam Howell out there now. Well, really more so y'all boy than mine. I like Sam Howell, but I'm not as necessarily high on him as a lot of people are. I want to draft a quarterback this upcoming draft, but... That man Carson Wentz loved throwing passes in the double coverage. I don't know what's going on. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Sam Howell is an actor. Forgot about that. Completely forgot about that. All right, next next week. That's crazy, too. I said that like eight times this stream alone that Sam Howell was inactive when people kept asking, and I forgot that fast. Carson Wentz's interception gave me PT, gave me a CTE or something. But, yeah, man, we uh, it's time to see some Sam Howell next week, though. Sam Howell next week, maybe some Stroud for the Commanders next year. You know what I'm saying? We'll see. See how it goes. How will be really good watching him go for 400 yards, three touchdowns next week. I mean, granted, I think the Cowboys may sit their starters, so it's not like Sam Howell's going to be going against Michael Parsons and Trevon Diggs and Demarcus Lawrence. And even if he does, it may only be for a limited amount of time. I think the Cowboys only played their starters the first half against the Titans or something like that. But I still want to prefer to see Sam Howell over these other guys. But like I said, I've been saying Sam Howell since Carson Wentz got hurt against the Bears. I've been on the Sam Howell this whole time. I've been talking bad about Heineke, but I've also been talking bad about Carson Wentz. I've been start Howell now so we can see what we have, so we can go ahead and draft the quarterback of our future in this draft. Because I'm not, I'm not even that huge on Sam Howell like a lot of y'all are. I hope Sam Howell works out, but... I'm t I'm straight up team draft a quarterback. I've been that way this whole time. After we didn't get a quarterback in the first round this past draft, I was like, oh, yeah. Let me go ahead and get this quarterback thing going for the 2023 draft. Heineke isn't looking so bad. Nah. He may not be three interceptions bad, but eh, I think it's time to go with Sam Howell, period. I've been Sam Howell since the Bears game. Eh, it may not be this bad, but... You know, Heine Wentz definitely looks worse right now than Heineke. But hey, I don't know about Heineke being good enough to save our season. Yeah, Sims was wide open. Yeah, that, hey, that man Carson Wentz is, is not. Oh, wow. What? Oh, okay, never mind. The game cast thing scared me. I was like, what's going on? Yeah, the saddest part is that the Browns aren't even that good. That's the saddest part. That is the saddest part. The Browns literally aren't that good. They're six and nine for a reason, and we just let them do this to us. When they and they have nothing to play for, and we have everything to play for. That's the saddest part. When you really think about it, that's the saddest part of it all. But again, if you haven't yet, man, please like up the stream. I'd really appreciate it big time. You said Heineke would have got you this easy game. I can see the argument for that. I can kind of see it. I mean, we know for a fact Carson Wentz didn't work out because we could see because he played. Heineke, I'm still not sure of. But like I said, I've been team. I, it's never been between Heineke or, or Wentz for me. It's been how and whoever we're going to end up drafting. But I, I personally feel like Heineke may have lost this game too. But, you know. Who knows? We'll never know. But, I mean, to me, again, it's not between Wentz or how I mean, Wentz or Heineke. It has not been that for me this whole time. It's been, it's been draft a quarterback. Rico, you think Ron has lost the locker room with pulling Taylor, then losing this game? Probably not. I don't think he's lost the locker room. 
I don't think he's lost a locker room, but I think this more than proves that, okay, Carson Wentz is getting cut and we're getting that 28 a mil per year back. I think that's really the only thing we know for sure after this game. Carson Wentz is gone. We're getting our 28 per year back. We're going to be able to pay Deron Payne and maybe a few other guys. Go ahead and give Cole Holcomb his money. Maybe go ahead and pay Cameron Curl ahead of time. Maybe pay Montez Sweat ahead of time if you got the money. Sign some free agent offensive linemen and draft a... And just go ahead and draft the uh go ahead and go big on quarterback, man. I say trade up for a guy. I do what you gotta do to get CJ Stroud after a while. I saw him saw what he did to my Georgia Bulldogs. I'm sure he is I don't think so. I mean, not enough for it to be detrimental. Remember, he said that he asked the players, like they they had a say in who started at quarterback, and then he went with Wentz. So maybe not every player wanted Carson Wentz to start, but at least enough of them probably did. Go ahead and show up the offensive line. It's definitely time to I think I think it's malpractice if we make it to the draft and we haven't signed at least one really good offensive lineman that we know can be good. I think at that point we just we just not we're not even trying to win at that point. You know what I'm saying? Like we 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 gotta we gotta please bring in somebody. Somebody. Matter of fact, we get nah, I'll wait. I'll wait to do a video on the free agency but we better bring in one or two guys and i'm not talking andrew norwell and trey turner cheap i'm talking about somebody for at least 15 million a year at offensive line we need to do something and if you don't bring in one free agency you may need to get one in the first round second round latest and then we need to figure out quarterback i think we need help at corner and linebacker as well but quarterback and offensive line are by far are by far the biggest problems but hey one positive thing is that we may get some Sam Howell this last game, and then in the offseason, Dan Snyder's gone. And also, after a game like this, we know, we know for a fact Wentz, we get our $28 million back for that, and we can pay De'Ron Payne. I think now with Carson Wentz, we know for a fact he's gone after this season. We should have the money to be able to pay De'Ron Payne, so that's one silver lining. We'll see how this goes, though, man. The, the, technically not out of it yet. We'll see what the Lions and all of those guys do next week, but we'll see. Michael Miller with my donation. Appreciate that. Winston Rivera need to go. Appreciate the donation, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate that. And yeah, man, it's real ugly, man. Pay pain, I agree. We go Mike Evans put up 47 and he's on my bench. How did you let that? I know, I know Mike Evans has not had a great fantasy season, but you can't. He's one of them guys you got to start every week, man. I ain't going to lie to you. You got to start every week, man. Terrible, just terrible. We forgot how to spell his name. It's spelled <laughs> Wentz with I N T. That's funny. I don't. Is that my first time? I feel like that's my first time seeing it. That's hilarious. Yeah, it's definitely time to make some changes, though. Yeah, nah, that throw to the running back was crazy in the flat on second down. That was crazy. That was crazy. He threw it eight yards over the running back's head. That was crazy. That man got CTE, man. He said mock draft season. Yeah, we about to get on it, man. I'm about to start doing mock drafts. I'm going to do free agency. I'm going to do all of it. Mock drafts, free agency, who I want to sign at offensive line, corner, all of that. He said Derek Carr, Tom Brady. He said some effing spark that was. That's hilarious. Yeah, Ron Rivera did say he wanted to start Carson Wentz to get a spark. Yeah, with that, with a spark. What a spark, man. What a spark it was. Yeah, I completely agree that Sam Howell is the only quarterback on roster that I'm even okay with seeing play next week, next year. Is Sam Howell or you draft the guy? Please. Please, Sam Howell to draft the guy. Nobody else in our current roster, no thanks. At this point, I'd see what Logan Thomas and Armani Rogers got. And then fourth and five, what's going on now? I mean, the game's pretty much over anyway, but you never know. People dropping passes. I mean, I don't even know what's going on. It looks like nobody wants to win anymore. Skip calling wins too. What do you, what do you think we can get if we lose our? He said Rico could do better than this. Now, I promise you I couldn't. Now, 
I can do a lot of things, but I'm not a good quarterback. I can play wide receiver. I can play edge rusher. I can play DB a little bit. I'm good at basketball. I am terrible at quarterback. I can't throw. I got it. I'm going to come clean on that. I think I've already told y'all that, but throwing, I am not good. I can do a lot of other stuff, but throwing, throwing, ah, not good. Not good at all. Yeah, <laughs> Thomas. Logan Thomas dropped that ball on purpose. Rico, you do it. Now, nah, I'm not doing the call in show this week. We're going to start picking it back up, though, especially during the offseason. For sure, the offseason, so we can start, start to talk about draft stuff, free agency stuff. But I'm not doing one today. Definitely not doing one today. I have some stuff to do as well afterwards. I got to knock out these videos, and then I'm busy. But yeah, man, definitely not not a call in show today. But we, I may do one after the, the Cowboys game. Especially if Sam Howell starts and if he balls out, we may do one for that. I mean, we just getting false starts like it's nothing, too. Cornelius Lucas, I mean, Charles Leno, then Samuel Cosme. What is going on? Getting false starts like it's nothing. What is going on? The season mathematically isn't over, but it's no longer in our hands. We have to hope. The Lions already beat the Bears, so they have to lose next week, whoever they play. We have to hope that the Seahawks... And the, the, the Packers lose this week and next week. So now it's out of our hands. Completely out of our hands. We'll see. I mean, but then again, if the Seahawks and the... I think if the Seahawks and the Packers win today after we lost to the Browns, I think we're out of it completely. But if the Seahawks and Packers lose, we still have a chance next week. So you never know. But it looks really ugly. It looks very ugly. Incomplete short to Terry McLaurin, of course. I don't know what that was. My boy Johnny Bo with the donation. Appreciate that. Thank you for bringing a good thing to a bad situation. I'd honestly put all my eggs in Sam Howe's basket. <laughs> Build the offense around his strengths, plus fire Ron and send Wentz on his way. I mean, again, you release Carson. First of all, appreciate the donation again. You release Carson Wentz. He, he's no dead cap. We get an additional $28 million for free agency next year. You pay Deron Payne. You go get a really good offense alignment, and you draft your quarterback, or you let Sam Howell start. But I'm, I'm extremely disappointed if Taylor Heineke or Carson Wentz are our starting quarterbacks next year. It needs to be Sam Howell or somebody that you draft, period. Nothing else. Nothing else. Absolutely nothing else. Nothing else. It's either Sam Howell or a quarterback that you draft. The people are already switching their channels to the red zone. That's so sad, man. That's so sad. Matter of fact, I'm about to go ahead and end this now so I can get it. Go ahead and get a jump start or my review video for everything that happened in this game. So I'm going to go ahead and dip out. I appreciate everybody to pull it up. Make sure you leave a like on the way out too. Yeah, man, it's time to go get Stroud. I, I like Stroud before that game last night against my Georgia Bulldogs. But after that game, after that game, I, I, think, I think it's time to trade up for Stroud. Like that man is different. I mean, against the best defense I think he's played against his collegiate career, he had his best game. And if you play your best against your at, at the at the best moments when the pressure is on the most, and when you're going against your best competition, I think that says something. That's that's an intangible. Yeah, I got to do the review video regardless. Your favorite? Oh, Jamila's here. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, man, I uh, I'm about to go ahead. This is a this is major Teddy fault. Why I bother review video? I still got to do it even after a loss. I got to do the review video. I don't want to, but I got to. So I'm going to still do work on some content after this. No call-in show, but I'm going to go ahead and get a head start on it. And, um, and yeah, man, I appreciate everybody that pulled up to the stream. Again, leave a like on the way out. Shouts out to everybody that donated especially. Again, just to go ahead and let y'all know, I agree that Georgia quarterback looks – oh, Stetson Bennett. Uh, I mean, C.J. Stroud is obviously better than him, but Stetson Bennett, you know, he, he he's good enough. I'm happy. I'm happy with what we're getting from him. Um, but, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and be on the lookout for – be on the lookout for um for draft content, free agency content. I'm coming with all of it. What free agents we should pick up, which quarterback, offense alignment, all of that stuff we should draft. I'm coming with more mock drafts, all of that. So stay tuned for all of that. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe because I'm coming with all of those videos this week. And, of course, man, please leave a like on the stream on the way out. I really, really appreciate it. I'm about to go ahead and do my review video now and whatever other clips I can think of. And I will catch y'all. Uh, I'm going to catch y'all later with some videos. Catch y'all next week with a live stream against the Cowboys. Hopefully, Sam Howell is our starting quarterback. And, um, and then I'll just do a whole live stream breaking him down for the most part. 
Um, and then, yeah, man, I appreciate y'all again. Leave a like on the way out. Appreciate y'all, and I will catch y'all later on with some more videos. Mock drafts, free agency, all of that type of stuff, man. We